Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Fortress Of. My name is Oscar. I'll be one of your hosts for today. And with me, uh, per use, are your other hosts, who will now name themselves now. My, my name's Jeff. Uh, my, <laughs> my name's Jeff. My name is Jeff. <laughs> Man, that is a joke that is not uh, relevant so in this time. <laughs> Hello, my name is Brian. Um, I exist. I'm here having a good time. Yep. Having a great time. And hey, Betty, it's everybody, it's it's Devin, your favorite Instagram, you know, profile that you follow. <laughs> Devin Lee, back at it again. He's either got <laughs> 10 followers or 500,000. We're still not right. quite sure. And Depending. I have posted nothing. Right. If you did follow me, you don't know anything new because I have never posted. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, and I'm Alex. I'm here as well. You know, <laughs> that, that, that's what you chose. Uh, that's the voice that you went with. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, listeners. Uh, Alex is not here right now. Uh, but yeah. That's okay. We miss him. He's alive, but he's enjoying his he's life right now. So maybe he's maybe finishing one of the many games that he will never finish. Yeah, he might be finishing Fallen Order finally. Maybe he's doing that. <laughs> <laughs> he'll he'll be here next week, hopefully though. Uh, mm -hmm. But hi guys, it's uh it's weird how uh man it feels like it, it's. It feels like we've had we've got like nine months worth of news to talk about and stuff to talk about, but that was just last week. Man, wow, it's crazy how much news could happen in a week. It's crazy, uh, yeah. Happy so, holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, happy holidays everyone. Happy holidays. <laughs> exactly. Valentine's Day. Love it. Great holiday. Yeah, it's great. It's great. <laughs> Man, the weather at this time of year is superb. I, uh, I, hope, I wish you all a very good Kwanzaa Christmas or whatever it is you celebrate. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Um, how you guys doing? How you guys feeling today? Feeling good. Feeling yeah. great. I'm drinking a 9.5% uh, beer right now. Ooh, I thought uh, you were going to say like 9.5% milk. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite like, whole, but it's pretty close. <laughs> right. Un unpasteurized. 2% right. fat wasn't enough. This is cheese. Like, what, what makes it better <laughs> is the fact that I am incredibly lactose intolerant. So that <laughs> yeah, would that's true. literally murder me. I would die. That would be the end. <laughs> I'm not on the podcast anymore. Sorry, guy. Have you, ever, have you ever heard of that thing where you can't like drink a whole gallon of of uh, you know of, of milk? milk? In an I've hour. watched well, Brian, many that, YouTube yeah, videos. That's just, that's just one glass of milk for Brian. One glass of milk would that's literally true. kill me. I would die. The end. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us, everyone, on another episode <laughs> on of the note. Fortress Up. Uh, we are a podcast where we talk about uh, lots of movie stuff, news stuff, video game stuff, TV stuff, lots of things pop culture and nerdy. And we hope you enjoy it because we love talking about it. So with that being said, you guys ready to jump into our first segment of the week? Born ready. Which is? News talk. News. <laughs> <Was that laughs> Insert <you>? theme noise <laughs> there. Was that you pretending to be Alex? <laughs> yeah. It's edited in. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> yes, everyone. It is time for the news. So let's get mm -hmm. into it. Our first news story for the week. Uh, Actually, Marvel. <laughs> ac <laughs> what are you talking about? It's crazy. What uh, is Marvel's Eternals? Their final trailer came out. Mm. Uh, I'm so excited for this movie. Yeah. Um, mostly because it's new people and it looks different. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like a whole other set of Avengers, but you know, like they're like the what the yes. Greek gods and like maybe they were the Roman gods. Like they, it looks like they were like the gods throughout history or something. Yeah, well, I know the Rob Stark, his character's name is Icarus for one thing, but um, they're, uh, they're just, yeah, I like, I, I give more team stuff. Like, once we've had the Avengers, I don't want, uh, it's hard to like single hero stories anymore, so it's like, give me more team stuff. Hell mm -hmm. yeah. And they also, they are super powered as fuck. <laughs> it, it doesn't help that yeah. the, the solo stuff we've had recently has been a little lackluster comparison. Uh, yeah. It sucks mm -hmm. that they were the most powerful heroes usually, and they became like kind of the most boring ones, uh, lore wise. Right. It came to, right. but no, they're I think this like, they're just flexing on everybody at this point. Like this movie has like Angelina Jolie, like uh, what, like Kit Harington, Salma Hayek, Kit Harington, Rob Stark, whatever uh, his name is. Ro Rob but, Stark, like, <laughs> what is his name? I apologize. You're Je Rob Stark. Jeff Bridges. <laughs> somehow, what's his name? He's he's only ever Rob Stark. Kumail Nanjiani. Yeah, like oh, so this cast yeah. is stellar. Directed by Chloe Zhao, who just won her Oscar for uh, Nomadland, which I still haven't seen. But here, <laughs> good things. Uh, but it looks cool because it looks like the. I would say the one thing that I'm not crazy about is the look of the deviants. I like the yeah, at the end of the yeah. trailer you see the big which looks like one of the main ones that's holding Angelina Jolie's character. Right. But there's also an earlier shot where Rob Stark's fighting like a weird metal dog, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. this looks like a weird bad Transformers. It, yeah. yeah, it feels like Transformers. Not crazy about it. And it reminds me a lot about like the 
kind of DC villains where they're like just so fucking just gray and metal. Yeah, he does nothing. look very Steppenwolf actually. Yeah, where I was just kind of like, I don't, I couldn't care less about this character. They but. they reminded me of like you guys. Uh, you remember that movie Edge of Tomorrow where like Tom Cruise is like doing like a yeah like a you know repeating time thing. Mm-hmm. They, it reminds me of Groundhog like, the Day, guy, but like yeah. the the enemy from that like. Very genetic. Yeah, in a way. Yeah, they're just metal and yeah. There's no personality because they're just all pure aggression. Right. Yeah, so I'm hoping I'm hoping that's a little better but because I think everything else and the characters in there look interesting. Um, yeah. And they, they already seem to have a good like camaraderie because they should because they've known each other for 7,000 years. So they, <laughs> right. you sh- they should feel, they, yeah, you should feel that from them. And I like I like how they're hammering like that you know like the the plot hole of like why didn't you guys do anything with Thanos and like they already explained it mm-hmm. in the trailer like of like why they're like oh well you know we were told not to right. interfere but like there's still some question because uh it, or at least all right so in this trailer it looks like they're the, what we know from this movie is that they're going to be going at the Deviants which is a different race but also Thanos I'm pretty sure he is or was a deviant like that's his race oh. so when they say we're not supposed to interfere with anything unless it's a deviant but it's like if thanos is a deviant or at least was why did you still not interfere technically mm-hmm. so it's I'm, I'm i'm interested to hear more about that Damn. question also like, we get to see a giant celestial again yeah like do we do are there any theories about like what that is that like guy with the helmet with the six eyes he's I, he's a celestial Kind of like, okay. like you see, he. I think he's the same one that you see in that first Guardians movie that has the power stone. Okay. Um, which they're just like mythical beings. Ego, Star Lord's father from the first, the second Guardians. He's a celestial, just in like in a weird or different form. Mm-hmm. Um, they're just they're just massive weird beings. They're mm-hmm. godly beings, sort of thing. Um, I don't know much about the Eternals. I didn't read that Neil Gaiman famous Eternals run that this is ma- primarily based off of. But I I've heard good things about it. But I'm mostly just excited for the cast and. Because it mm. looks different than other Marvel stuff. Yeah, we're, we're getting into the weird place where we're getting very supernatural and ethereal and, you know, spacey. And I think it's pretty cool to see how they're going to handle that. Because, I mean, we know that Marvel gets fucking weird once they get yeah, passive, like yeah. the normal Avengers shit outside of just like, you know, yeah. Earth and that kind of stuff and Thor's land. Like, so it's cool. It's, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to see if they'll mm. do it well, do it justice. After like after the shows that just finished, they've just jumped straight into like crazy cosmic stuff. Like I don't know if you guys yeah. saw like you watched either of the what ifs yet, but like you know this just this guy like the intro to it is like this guy who's like I'm just the watcher. Like look look at all the these watcher, new realities yeah. with me that just started because of Loki. It's just like it's so they're just like leaning hard into like the chaos now. Yeah, I'm excited, but it is also dangerous territory. It but, is <laughs> it's scary. Yeah, it's gonna get a little crazy, but like you know, every comic series always goes to like multiverse and you know multiple versions of the same, you know, stuff. So I don't know if we'll ever get that, but like if you know, who knows? So it's gonna be weird. Yeah, we'll see. All right, next up, uh, oh guys, back to Halo. It seems we're always talking about Halo Infinite. Uh, the game's not gonna come out with a campaign co-op or Forge. Mm. I've never played any Halo, so take it away. How do you feel, guys? <laughs> Devin, yeah, Brian, I'd, I would love to like have a positive headline for this game, but like. I, I, <laughs> I, my, like, Halo to me, like, Halo 2 was, like, the, that's, like, when I was, you know, young, you guys already know, it was, like, my number, but two video game of all time, like, these, like, the, the way, the reason that game was magical, and the reason it caught a, our attention as a kid, because, like, the story was so good, the campaign was, ama- like, the, the, the campaign was good, but the co-op, playing Halo on co-op, split screen, on Legendary, where if any of you die, you have to go back to the checkpoint before and it takes forever to get through anything and it's fun <laughs> as heck. But like that, like playing Halo on co-op with my brother is the main memory I have of that game. And the fact that it's not going to have it, I mean, what the hell? I mean, like, I, I just feel like it's not, it's just not Halo. I, I feel like it's, it's, right. it's uh, bad. <laughs> I agree with Devin. I think they're doing everything wrong. <laughs> so far <laughs> as a whole and that's not to say because um i told you guys earlier off air that i i got into like the technical test unfortunately i didn't get to play because right. i was moving and i didn't have internet at the time but i hear like there were good things about it uh, they're adding bots into the multiplayer right now which is kind of cool so apparently the bots are Ooh. really smart and they did a lot of interesting which i think it is um titanfall had the same thing sorry to cut yeah. you off titanfall did the same thing and i thought it was really fun titanfall super cool um the artificial intelligence apparently works really well in that game is really smart um, but they didn't have a beta, and it looks like they're not setting to have a beta for the multiplayer. Um, every Halo I've played thus far has had a beta of some sort, um, and at least Halo 3 and Halo Reach. Um, I can't remember if Halo 4 did. I feel like it probably did, but I can't remember. That was a while ago. Um, so to see that happen and them see not do that, 
that's already X in the fucking bank right there. Like, oh, you already fucked up. And now they're doing this with co-op where it's like, I know me personally, I'm not super into the story like talking about, but I do play every single storyline and I always play it with friends. That's just how I've always played Halo. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of feeling the way that Last of Us 2 is feeling with multiplayer where it's like, it probably will come eventually, but if it does come, it's going to be too little too late and no one's going to care at that point. Right. Um, so I think I'd rather them just okay. keep pushing it back and keep trying to make a better game than trying to just make an unfinished game and just rush right. it out, which seems like that's 100% yeah. what they're doing, which means they're doing a lot of crunch time stuff, which means Ugh. the workers are not doing good work and are not having, you know, right. good, healthy work-life balance. I don't love that. I don't want to see that. So the game's going to suck. Yeah, it's just another example <laughs> of like the, the trash of like modern gaming where they just yep. release a game at like 60%. And they just expect yeah. you to like wait for the updates to come out with the full game. It's like, why don't you just like do it? You know, it's just. Really I guess I, my only hope would be that because they're cutting the stuff, they can just focus on the single player, and hopefully that's good for people that appreciate that. And that, like, I get like it not being the full package, and it mm-hmm. sucks. I what have they been doing this whole what, time? What have they been I, doing I this know. whole time? <laughs> I, I yeah, I oh, I really would know. Well, I'd love to know the background of what's happening in that company. It, it's know. been it's been but, rough. I know they had a lot of this. personnel changes recently, so that's been a whole thing with them, but. It's right. not just and like you know like couch co-op has been so shafted in recent years by like every oh, single game like you know it, you have to have your own system to play anything on co-op anymore. I just like it's just something so core to the identity of Halo to me that it's just a disgrace to even consider you know l- right. launching without it. So whatever, it's just disappointing. But whatever, I, I've like checked out on this game a long time ago. <laughs> I don't have high expectations of Halo Infinite. I'll play it. I'm sure I'll enjoy it. I don't expect much from it. <laughs> Halo, Halo's already been dead. This is just like it's reanimated corpse at this point. Exactly. Like Halo's been dead. <laughs> Halo, Halo was dead after Halo Four, probably. Yep. <laughs> so, all right, moving on. Uh, Star Wars Visions put out a trailer, and it oh. looked pretty damn cool. Yeah. Not gonna lie. Yeah. Uh, it is the the project that we talked about last week, where it's a uh, gonna be full on anime. It's the Animatrix, but Star Wars basically. Mm-hmm. It's just a bunch of different companies making these short little anime films set in the Star Wars universe, um, and it looked awesome. Lots of lightsabers. That shows that Star Wars music fits with any kind of genre. It looks like. Uh, I'm excited. It looks cool. Coming out September 22nd. I love anime. This is the first domino to fall in them redoing the sequel trilogy. They are Shut opening their minds to new up. ideas, and soon they will realize that it's time to go back and end game the entire <laughs> sequel trilogy and do it over again. And I love it because this I is don't. like what's, this is the kind of energy that Star Wars needs, like new ideas, like creativity, like new stuff. I I'm I'm very in for this movie, but then again, it is going to be kind of weird to see like a straight up anime character with like those Japanese like stick flip flops carrying like a lightsaber like that is going to be kind of and like also like towards the end brian like it looks like there's like a sonic character in it like with the floppy ears so uh-huh. you know, maybe sonic's gonna make an appearance who knows oh man sonic confirmed canon that's yeah. how you Star Wars. yeah <laughs> damn i was gonna just fucking neg uh devin completely and say i don't care about that at all but he actually makes a good point that i do think that uh, <laughs> i do think that it's a good idea to have other ideas in Star Wars as a whole, because that's been a big issue that I've had in Star yeah. Wars just as a whole, is that it's been too homogenized. Um, they do it with the mm-hmm. games, they do it with the movies, where only, you know, one company can make the games, only one company can make the movies. I think this kind of stuff that has such a deep lore is best when other people get to put their ideas in there. So to see this, I think it's yeah. dope. It's awesome. I love anime. You know, that's my yeah. shit. It looks very shonen as fuck, so that means there's gonna be a lot of fighting. Um, that's yeah. awesome. So, yeah, Yo, that awesome. one where like the guy, like the the Sith, like pulls out that lightsaber and just starts spinning around as he's like taking those shots. Mm-hmm. That one, like it's kind of in black and white. That one looks like it's going to be a pretty. I mean, they all look like they're going to be pretty interesting, but that one especially. I mostly want to know like the time periods for. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. where are they set? Type of thing. Right. When are they set? And where are they set? Yeah. So. And it looks like they're gonna you know just come come up with some new cool fight scenes and stuff, and maybe that'll you know maybe like hey maybe. There'll be like YouTube videos of of these ones, and then maybe like the the CEOs <laughs> or like the executives at Disney will like maybe they'll see in their recommended feed like this the cinematic trailer for Kotor, and maybe they'll be like, "What is this? Like we never watched this before. Like, oh, we we could make movies that were this good. Like <laughs> they made a better trailer in five minutes than we did with three movies. Oh man, like we let's just copy this, and then we'll finally get what we fucking want." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I feel like this is going to continue in our main topic later, listeners. But let's move on. <laughs> uh, our last one. Uh, oh, 
Uh, Skyrim got released is getting released again, guys. Uh, it's coming out on the new consoles for the tenth anniversary. It's just Skyrim again, you know. It's more Skyrim. How many wow. versions is it now? Uh, so there is the Xbox 360 version. There's the uh, PlayStation 3 version. There's the Xbox One version, the PlayStation 4 version. There's the PC Game version. The there's the special Game edition the PC Jesus. version. Uh, I'm pretty sure they put it on Samsung uh, fucking refrigerators. Um, I'm pretty sure it's going to be on uh, my life support system when I die in 20 years. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Skyrim's going to come out every system ever, and I've bought it on every system ever as well. Um, yeah. This one I is going to be... my bathroom mirror. Yeah. <laughs> Your fucking yeah. TI-83 calculator, if you still got that from high school. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Put that, that, that program in there. Uh, yeah, this yeah, one just... is going to be having some of the additional content that was mostly mods made that you had to pay for. Mm. Um, back in the day when you had them, they were like paid mods. Um, that's yeah. what's different because there was already a special edition version that came out that was supposed to be updated graphics and all that stuff that we wanted akin to Grand Theft Auto V, whatever the fuck. So you would think... We don't need another, do we? Well, Bethesda said, <laughs> the fuck oh, you yeah, thought. I love this. I love so this. So <laughs> they added that extra content in there. Now it's not going to be paid anymore. Oh. So then you get that content for free, which adds more storylines, more added mm-hmm. graphics, more mm-hmm. right. quests, all that other shit that I hope people got fucking a cut for this because you're literally just profiting yeah. off of other people's, uh, a lot of people's work, work and not your own. And you're really right. going to try to release this shit for 13th time. And think that's I mean, okay. Todd Howard said, like, as we see that people are playing Skyrim so much every year, all the time. If as long as people keep playing it, we will keep releasing it. I'm just like, <laughs> I, I, he's not wrong. I guess they said two I things for certain: death and taxes. They did not. <laughs> they did not hear that Grand Theft Auto Five and Skyrim exist. Because those games yeah, will continue to be a constant forever. of our lives for fucking ever. And I hate it. Death and Taxes and Skyrim re-releases. We will never see a Grand Theft Auto 6. We will never see another Elder Scrolls. We will only get Skyrim until we die. And that is it. Yeah. Uh, oh, hey, I mean, God. it stays timeless. I like. I just re-downloaded it a few, uh, like, like last Jeez. week. And I literally That's like, what I was I going hate. through Solstein. Like, they talked about it. And I downloaded it again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I fucking like, hate but, them, man. Hey, but That's I love it though because like they made it where you can make you know play the mods in the Xbox and like so I have three followers now, so every fight is just like done in five seconds. So, <laughs> and like sometimes <laughs> they start fighting each other. Like I've broken the game, but I still like. I was about to say, why don't it. you just like go? Can you? Is there a mod to just hit the credits and win? Yeah, uh, there a there's that? a mod there's to turn like cheap, every single fucking room. dragon into Randy Savage. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> or no, Thomas the Tank Engine too. Or Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> oh god, yeah, that um, game will never die, I, and no. it's 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 hilarious. Oh my but god, you, you know what's funny, boys? Though, like, I have all that. I have three followers, and I can still like fi- finish any fight in two seconds, and I still make every like cave 20 times oh longer my than needs to be because I crouch and steal and try to get everybody with my bow and arrow. <laughs> every time. You're a There's only yeah. one like if you play Skyrim any other way than just stealth archer, you're playing it wrong. Like <laughs> <laughs> There's only one way to play it. So yeah, listeners, uh that was our last news story, but I'm sure we will continue with the Skyrim news in another year or another two <laughs> years. It'll never stop. It will never <laughs> die. No, 10 years. But it's dying right now. All right. Here we go, guys. It's time for our main topic of the week. Uh, but guys, it seems like, once again, we're trapped in somewhere else. It looks very familiar, but also very weird and spacey. Uh, it looks like, to me, like we're in the fortress of... Mandalorian. 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 Alex, Mark Hamill looks kind of stupid back. and a child. <laughs> Spoilers. Baby Yoda. What up? This is yeah. The this so, is the well, yes, uh, listeners, we're in the Mandalorian Season 2 fortress this week. Uh, we'll be discussing all of Season 2. Of uh, yeah, Mandalorian. Yeah. Um, overall, I think we all enjoyed this quite a bit. Uh, more than more than season one, I think we, uh, we all in agreement. This is better than season one. Yeah, yeah. I think as I think far so. as Star Wars goes, I think this is one of the strongest pieces of Star Wars media oh, so far. A hundred percent. With yeah. that and like the cartoons, probably definitely Str- live action. S- strongest, yeah. uh, like yeah. uh, aside from the movies, or are you talking inclu- uh, just talking I'm about including TV shows? the movies? Absolutely. I Whoa. Think the movies are <laughs> Whoa. We're not yeah, I'm with are you. Are you kidding me? I'm with of you. Course. I'm like, with you. As Freddie Prince Jr. What says, about the OG Star trilogy? Well, you're just gonna disrespect. You're just gonna spit on their name. <laughs> oh, homie. I'm thinking of it. Yeah, like That's new very Star true. Wars stuff. Other than Rogue One, this is definitely the best. But you know, like season season one was more of like a proof of concept, right? And season two, it's like. You know, all right, maybe they had a longer lease. Now we can, we can we can dive deep and 
Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely the season. This whole season has been like a, a test on like how far can we go when it comes to referencing things that people may not know about. <laughs> right. right. Mayor, I mean, it's when it comes down to it, this is a show about fan service. And I think that yeah. it's done really well in doing that. And I think that's something that's, I, I'm liking that I'm seeing a lot more media pick up when it comes to just doing more of what they know that people like and what people want. I think that's mm-hmm. how you can always make the big bucks and always do really well and successfully with your show. Uh, right. And, and like, here. that's the thing is like most people, when they hear the word fan service, they immediately like want to shrug and be like, oh, gross, that's stupid. But like, I don't, I don't think all fan service is awful. Yeah, I, don't I mean, it a, can be, gimmicky. I don't think it's a bad thing. And when, yeah, so I would, I would say that a lot of Marvel is fan service. Absolutely. Yeah, well. And that's why it's that sure. a billion dollars at least every and it's time a, a movie and, comes out. Right. <laughs> And like, but let's let's yeah. be honest. Star Wars needs some freaking fan service right now. Okay, <laughs> like this this was this this brought you know this kind of brought the fan base together again after we were so divided and split over fucking Last Jedi. And all right, and listeners, here it is. This is it's the first Star years. Wars topic not we've yet, gone onto, and you're now getting the full <laughs> some of the experience of what Devin has in, oh, when it comes I'm to gonna, Star I'm Wars. Go uh, movie. Oh, I, I just, can't uh, wait. But anyway. <laughs> I'm, I'm for that one episode. I'm just gonna just give me an hour alone. All right, I'll just go in a dark room. Well, we're gonna have to make two podcasts that week, and like one will be the Devin Extended Edition, the Devin and podcast. then the other one will just be us. Thank you for the Patreon, the, the Devin. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna sit in a dark room and just like turn all the lights off and just get as, as mad as I can just possibly get. Angry get. as hell, right? Yeah, I'm oh, just gonna man. get real mad about it. But anyway, like. Yeah, I mean, it, it brought the fan base together. Like, everybody kind of loved Mandalorian, and it was good for casual fans, too, because you had the whole Grogu thing. was, like, really easy to bring casual fans in there. You got totally. the Hardos that, you know, like all the... Right. Like, you know, all the all the new characters coming in and stuff like that. All the, or the, I'm sorry, the old characters that, you know, making appearances and cameos and right. all that kind of stuff. So it, it really was, like, great for that purpose of, like, it, it kind of breathing life back into a franchise that had been very damaged. <laughs> <laughs> to say the I, least i'm not like uh that's you're not, right that's not a bold no, take guys okay it's, it's the truth it's fine uh, how do you uh, feel about it alex i kind of want to get your opinion of it because i feel like out of the attachment goes yours is maybe on the lower end of the spectrum than say like Devin, who's read the books yeah I haven't, <laughs> I haven't read any star wars books but i have always been a huge star wars fan i grew up watching the movies like on repeat as a kid uh i was super excited when the prequels came out and uh, super excited when the sequels are coming out albeit they weren't as satisfying as you know i would have liked but I honestly could say that I'd be happy with like just about anything that they would ever do just because it's it's just more Star Wars. It's more Star Wars. The more Star Wars, the merrier in my book. It's not all going to be great, but it'll make me happy. And I'm, and I'm going to have a fun time watching it. <laughs> it's just like a fun, nostalgic thing for me. It's it's near and dear to my heart, and I just have so much fun with it. So I can't I can't yeah. be mad at them, though I, I do. I wish the listeners could have seen Devin's face that whole time. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking casual fan. How dare you say it? No, I, I, I am a not a casual take. fan. That was I'm just a big fan. The uh, hardest I disagree. Hold them. I don't know. I don't hold yeah. them as uh, uh, as critically as I critically. Suppose. I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I think it's fine to like what you like in whatever capacity you like it. <laughs> just <laughs> stop yelling at people, Devin. <laughs> <laughs> That's the neck beard way. What do you mean? <laughs> Ooh, I mean, fair enough. You know, yeah. Star Wars is it. In the, at the end of the day, it's for kids. And like, yes, I'm a grown man. I shouldn't take it so seriously. But because I loved it when I was a little kid, oh no, that's it has totally a special fine. Place yeah. in my heart. And, and I, I think the biggest butchered, thing is because people like you that have read the books that are you know considered non-canon and stuff. And when you'll see like really smartly written shows like Clone Wars, is it kind of hurts when you see the main storyline be so one note when you know there's so much enriching like depth yes, in this this yes. universe Amen. it's also Amen. it's it's also uh, we're going on a tangent we got to get back to the show know, <laughs> but just one thing is that i, I think uh, if, i think for me at least a lot of it is like you see the opportunity that was there and it's just kind of squandered in a bit in a mm-hmm, way so it's mm-hmm. like ah you wish that you may took better chance with that opportunity but that's Absolutely. about it Absolutely. we're not yeah. talking about any of that stuff we'll, we'll, we'll go back to that later we're yeah. talking about that metalhead <laughs> motherfucker we're uh, talking about <laughs> Fucking Din. Mandalorian. What's his name? Din Din Jin Din, Din Jaren. Jaren. Uh, some of that, yeah. I just call him Mando like the rest of the yeah. world, which uh, honestly sounds like a slur and I hate it, but right. it, it is what it is. <laughs> uh, so um just real quick, overall, uh well, actually, real quick, spoiler. Everyone has probably seen this at this point, but just 
in case spoiler alert for the entire season two blanket right there that's it mando uh, right. dies <laughs> <laughs> just kidding Jay rogu man. kills mando no oh um, man he takes out a lightsaber that'd be awesome <laughs> <laughs> anywho <laughs> Uh, no, but, um, so just real quick, brief synopsis about, like, the, the overall plot of this whole season. Basically, finding Rogu a home. That's pretty much his entire journey through, is what his, pl- the story of this is, is trying you to find him a home. Baby Yoda. That's his real name. His You're real right. Baby we haven't gotten there yet. Baby Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, let's start with episode nah, one of season two, chapter nine, The Marshal. Brief synopsis is basically... He goes back to Tatooine. We're at Tatooine again because, you know, it's Star Wars and we love Why not? fucking Tatooine. <laughs> it's the easiest shot, man. Sand level. Yeah. Um, I, 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 actually, I thought this was a great season opener. I thought it was mm-hmm. a little fun. What happens yeah. in that uh, one? I know, I know he meets this, this guy. This is got, where we uh, get the glimpse of the Boba Fett armor. Like, yeah. Because uh, yeah. uh, Homeboy's wearing it. Homeboy That's right. uh, Cobb they Van. the giant worm. A.K.A. Thing. Uh, yeah. Timothy Oliphant, who... I love it how Timothy Oliphant is just a sheriff no matter what. Yeah. Like, this man had to go to space and still had to be a sheriff. Like, yeah. he can't escape it. He I can't love escape that actor it. so much. Yeah, he's such a good actor. He's like, he's like, hey, could I try a different accent? They're like, they're like, no, country accent. That's that. Yeah, we want you to just stay with that. <laughs> right, it's just, just be you and justified and everything else you've been yeah. in. You're a sheriff. But I'm, I'm on a desert planet in space. You're a sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> And he's good at being the asshole character. And that's what I love about him. Yeah, he's great. Um, so we get introduced to him, which is cool. He's wearing the Boba Fett armor, which when I first saw it, it looks a little goofy on him. Yeah, I'm he's got like, spandex <laughs> underneath. I was like, it's like too hold small. up. <laughs> it's too small for him. So I'm like, that's not Boba Fett. It looks that like a Halloween funny costume. It <laughs> yeah. really does. Like, it, it just looks so goofy with just the chest piece. Um, but you do get to see it. So it's like, okay, if the chest armor could... Um, survive the sarlacc pit you have to know that boba fett's coming yeah all the teases in the first season with the sound effects of him you knew you knew he was somewhere around there right and also like there's rumors that uh timuera morrison the actor play who plays Django fett in episode two um was coming for the season some people speculated whether or not he's going to be boba fett or if he'd come back as just another clone because we know some of the clones have survived to this point and spoiler alert for the end of this episode Boba Fett's fucking back. Yeah, they just and gave it. They, they just gave it away they, like on a silver planet. Yeah, I like, loved uh, it. I was like, "What? A, all right." And that's first episode with it. Hell yeah, let's get straight to it. So that was the guy who played a uh, uh, Django. Fett? Django. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah, that's really awesome. That's how they ended the episode. But before this CG, they got way more money this season for the Absolutely. budget because yeah. like put yeah. a ton into that it. crate dragon. That looks looks amazing. Cool. Like looks that like whole Star Wars battle. Movies quality for sure. It looks so fucking good. Mm-hmm. Um. Just and like it was just such a cool image seeing the two Mandalorians fly around and fight it. I was like, "What? Yeah. This is a TV show? Like that's Disney shit. for you, I guess." And I that know, big, right? That's Disney a big side money. thing for me. Yeah. Is uh, I did like seeing a uh, fake Boba Fett uh, shoot his back rocket because it always looks <laughs> yeah. like it won't actually like it would just clip his helmet and he'll <laughs> it die. Looks so from dumb. It. <laughs> so to see him actually be able to use it and it like not fucking kill him was like okay, right? I, I get it now. Right. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> that was pretty satisfying. Yeah. The one thing that you have to kind of just let go, it's like. Where does the rock? Where does he get all the rockets? Because like when <laughs> yeah, it shoots out, he doesn't get vague. it back. Yeah, where are all the rockets coming he's from? He's like, okay. go, go, make he some has more. One when the plot needs one, he always right. has one when the plot needs one. <laughs> it's perfectly it's fine. Thing. How many arrows do you have? Thirteen, and it's like <laughs> there's three thousand enemies we got to fight right now. I have thirteen yeah. arrows. Okay, right. fair yeah. enough. <laughs> That's kind of like the gist of that first episode. I don't know if you guys have anything else to say about it. It's a solid first episode. Um, I mean, yeah. The only thing. To add, uh, it's like, what was Boba Fett doing for 30 years or 10 years or whatever when he knew that, like, he's just walking around the desert looking for Right, his why did he stay there forever? Yeah, for he, so didn't, he, didn't, he didn't leave the planet or anything. Yeah. I yeah, guess maybe he's he like, could oh, in, Mando's got I my guess, armor or... now. I have to go I mean, hunt If you down. think about it, that, uh, that monster, like, ate him or whatever, so maybe he was, like, pretty beaten up and had to, like, recover right. for a long-ass time. But he, he was using Slave 1 later, his ship, so, like, Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I do like how they dove into a little bit of the Tusken Raiders, like, they're massive people. They weren't just, like, mm-hmm. sand people, which is a mm-hmm. terrible fucking term. Ooh, that, is, that is such a Awful slur. fucking term. It's terrible. <laughs> but, like, I do like how, like, they had that whole, like, uh, scene around the campfire where he's, like, they're, like, chatting in, like, because uh, Mando knows how to speak with them. That was really and cool. so it, it, it made them more than yeah. just screaming. Monsters. 
people in the desert. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So it was cool to see the, their side of it, which we had never seen before. A lot of that happens this season, which we'll get into later, mostly with the Empire. But this is the first little glimpse of seeing what you normally uh, assume is an enemy yeah. as not yeah. an enemy. So that's pretty cool. They still um, got they still got used like putties though. I, I think it comes a lot from just trying to break those archetypes as this right. this yeah. series is getting more mature. Um, yeah. As please do that because Jesus Christ, sand people is a terrible phrase and should never exist. But yeah, yeah. good old <laughs> George. So nice I do like that. the human thing. Yeah, it's another one where we see maybe George Lucas's writing is a little. It's shaky. awful. Everyone else is terrible. You can't. <laughs> I mean, stormtrooper slaughter's still okay, though. We're we're okay with not humanizing. Oh them. yeah, we'll we'll get to that. Episode, we will like. get to that. Oh my goodness. Uh, but yeah, episode one done. Uh, episode two, chapter ten, the passenger. All my I wrote like five notes for this, but the only note that matters: stop eating everything. <laughs> my this God, is, this, this me... baby won't stop oh, eating. Man. He's hungry, oh. man. I get it, yeah. but he's committing genocide. Yeah, this made me so mad because it was supposed to be like a cute little funny, like, oh, Grogu kind of. Oh, and I was no. like, no, stop I eating this it. woman's children, you piece of shit. Like, it, it was pretty eat. monstrous, yeah. And then he ate the spider, and then he, which caused a whole bunch of terrible shit to happen. Oh, man. Which also looks really good. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I was like, wow. Yeah. It's and like terrifying. I was like, damn, this is nice. But um, yeah, yeah that fucking kid. So. It's another fetch quest. They uh, <laughs> every episode is a damn every episode <laughs> mini quest from a video game. The show's a, a yeah, it's a, it's a video game. Uh, we already kind of know that, especially from season one, where it's very fetch questy. He can never just get to one place. The next episode, although he does in this season, I was very surprised. <laughs> we'll get to that. But every other time, something happens, and he has to do a quest. Yeah. And in this one, he has to get this frog lady to her husband so that they can save their whole entire species while this baby's like, ah, fuck it, I'm hungry. They got a backpack full of eggs. Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool, just carrying them yeah. around. I was worried. I was like, oh my God, please, I don't... Yeah, I, just, I thought it was going to break. Oh my gosh. I was so scared. I thought she was going to die so for stressful. sure. Like, well, but maybe not for sure because it's Disney, but still. But I was hoping that something interesting was going to happen. Like, oh yeah, he's eating the babies, but like he's actually keeping them warm inside of his belly and not like, nope. you know, <laughs> and just pooping them out or something. It's like, no, he, he actually murdered like eight <laughs> children. <laughs> In the span of episodes. I thought he was going to run out at something. That was going to be like a plot point. Like, I thought at right. some point, he's, the eggs are all going to be gone. Right. Like, under their oh, noses. And, and then she's going to start, like, they're going to get there. Cutesies. And she's going to turn around in this empty jar. And she's like, like, you know. <laughs> like, oh. no, no. Like, like that, I, I thought that was going to happen. But Yeah, I was just like, I, I get the gimmick. But for me, I was just like, nah, man. You, that, it's not cool, dude. I didn't, I didn't yeah. think it was cute at all. I thought it was really fucking annoying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh man. Yeah, that, that time was it was kind of like well. that joke was stale. But that no, at the beginning of that episode, you know, you guys talk about like the the campy dialogue and stuff. I hated the beginning of that, where like the girl, his contact there on Tatooine, the mechanic. Is, oh like, my gosh, something. she's my and least she's, like, favorite character. She's like, ever. Oh, I speak that. Like, oh, oh, oh. And like, just starts making fucking random oh, noises. I was like, Amy this is Siddhar the dumbest. Yeah. I hate her as an yeah. actress. <laughs> like that. that I she seems that like somebody off. who just like no offense to the actor. But she seems like someone who would like won a contest and gets to be in a couple of episodes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just like this Aww. person is so unbelievable in this whole universe yeah, of Star like Wars. Her, her line she just feels like awful. she just got picked up from Tennessee, America, and placed <laughs> into Star Tennessee. Wars. I'm like, that just does not mesh everybody. I wasn't gonna shit on her that. But to be fair to her, though, her <laughs> lines are horrible. Like her lines were trash. Like you, you're sitting there, like, like, oh, I speak this lizard language. Like, e e e. <laughs> <laughs> it, I think that, that's like, like one of those moments where it's like oh yeah star wars is for kids i guess isn't it but like have, oh, have you guys so seen her bad. other roles that she's ever played for that's kind of like no. her, her her thing like if she has yeah. her own show too like a little like variety show or whatever where she does a lot of skits oh, and it, that's comedian yeah. she likes to play that character that's just really allowud and really annoying and that's like hmm. her jam ah okay and it's right. it's rough well, well done <laughs> clearly well done. they yeah they wanted that from her right so, yeah I don't, yeah, if anything, I don't fully blame her for that because you, I would, just not going to get her to do something else, I guess. I, they're just like, just be exactly what we hired you for. So, they, yeah, right. it just seems like they're just like giving her the direction is just like, just be yourself. And it just doesn't, <laughs> right. it doesn't work for Star Wars. No one should it's be such, themselves. Yeah. She won a contest <laughs> for Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> I won. I'm going to be the mechanic. <laughs> This woman makes more money than any of us ever will. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, my God. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that whole spider scene, is, I mean, that was very alien. That whole scene with the mm. eggs it literally looked like a, a set from Alien. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. And all the spiders come out, and then the giant spider comes out. And it's just, it's a good scene, especially when 
you think he's made it to the ship, and then all of a sudden the giant mom al- or spider crashes on top of the ship, and then yeah. he's saved by the X wings. The X wings I thought was a really cool inclusion because we get to see a little more of the outside world, and they mm-hmm. are definitely going to come back into this story. But that whole evasion scene beforehand, yeah. when they're chasing him to get him to crash there, that was super like, exciting. It, Another yeah, whole like cool. just movie quality scene where it's like, wow, they've, they've really stepped it up for this one. I thought it was a cool uh, viewpoint, especially in that episode where it's like, OK, the, the rebels that were used to being the heroes of every other um, main movie. It's almost like a villain or like an anti-hero in this uh, in this universe of the Mandalorian series. Mm-hmm. It's like he's running away from what we would normally consider to be the good guys. Right. It's just a, a really interesting right. viewpoint that the he's yeah. just yeah. not like agreeing with them, not trying to be, yeah. like, friends with them. He's just like, you guys are in my way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. because yeah, what would you consider definitely. Mandalorian? Kind of like an anti-hero? Yeah, uh, I, g- I guess uh, so. I guess so, yeah. So it's like you're rooting for the good guys to kind of lose in this situation because it's like it stops right. Mando from getting Grogu to, to do yeah. the thing. Right. I like that yeah, kind yeah, of stuff, that play on what you think well, is Well, I guess right. it's always, like, that whole thing of, like, every character thinks they're the hero of their own story. So sure. even the villains think they're the hero. So it's... Yeah, it's yeah, cool to sure. see that perspective every now and then. It gave me yeah. a very Guardians of the Galaxy feel, uh, that episode with the X-Wings and stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, those are yeah. cool. But you can tell the, the, the Disney touch is, is starting to seep into everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I will say I have, a, I have a few problems with this season and the series in general. One of them being the mechanic, but uh, I digress. <laughs> uh, this, this episode in particular, the, uh, the, writing, the writing for me is just so like campy and like bizarre and just, mm-hmm. they just make it like, writing plot points just to move the story along or just because they like, didn't have other ideas. Uh, main reason in this episode, they, they crashed their ship or whatever, like, and Mandalorian all of a sudden is like, oh, crap, our ship is ruined. Like, we're fucked. We're just going <laughs> to die here. Like, this is going to be our tune. <laughs> Game over. Like, that would, I feel like that would never happen in any other episode. Like, he was, he's like born and bred to fight. He's going to mm-hmm. give it his all mm-hmm. to his last dying breath. And then all of a sudden, yeah. he just is like, yeah, we're screwed. Like he didn't even, he didn't even get out of his ship to try to fix it. He was just like he just threw in the towel. <laughs> it is like even like all of season one and this season, him as a character, he's he's a good like like character warrior and stuff. But a lot of the times, he just kind of gets out of scrapes because he's lucky and has friends. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah for real. absolutely. Like for most real, of the time, little. he's just like. If we, he had no friends, he'd be <laughs> fucked. He wouldn't be he's, getting anywhere. He's got real huge main character energy that really helps him out a lot. That yeah, he actually do anything in real life. And I uh, like, I love how the X Men guys. Or, I'm sorry, X Men. The X Men guys. <laughs> Wolverine came out as he always does. Long Disney <laughs> franchise. They shoot the spiders off of like this clearly like derelict ship that is like broken behind the pair, and they're, they're like, just like don't you know like he's like hey, oh can you right give me some hand, and they're like they're like. No, and they fly away. It's like they, they're gonna die. Like it's you so left them. funny. They're like, nah, fuck it. All you did was make their death longer. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> like we uh, saved you. No, but then but, the, but, yeah. the the worst part for me was after all that, after throwing in the towel, you know, avoiding death and and surviving. He's like, okay, you know what? I think I'll give it a shot, and then it works, <laughs> and they fly off the planet. I'm just like, you you got you could have tried this a long ass time ago. Yeah. Right. And then there's just like some random hot springs in there that the that the lizard lady was like chilling at. I was like, okay, that was weird. Yeah, I got kind of awkward. I don't like that that feeling that I got when I saw that scene. I was like, mm. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <weird. Yeah. laughs> but yeah, I think the only way I can challenge that is kind of like Star Wars is just campy. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's, it I don't think it's ever not been. So that makes me a little bit. I was upset with that at first because it gave me so much more than normal Star Wars does. But then when I thought about it, I was like. You remember the fucking prequels and the the dialogue of that movie and how goofy that was. And then I, when I think about that, I'm like, this maybe isn't so bad. Like maybe I can allow <laughs> right. this actress to to say the goofy nonsense that she says because yeah, at least it's not yeah. Hayden Christensen talking to droids. Oh man, yeah. Like, <laughs> All right, we're moving on. Episode three, chapter eleven, the heiress. Uh, this one was a highlight mm. episode just because it introduces uh Bo Katan, a character from Clone Wars and Rebels, who uh, is really cool. She's an awesome character, and like this was one of the things everyone kind of was speculating. She's coming back to be this character. Um, and we got to finally see her. And it's cool. She's actually played by her voice actor, Katie Sackhoff, and like that rarely oh, fucking happens. That's, awesome. <laughs> um, that's cool. So basically, it's another fucking Fetch Quest <laughs> episode. <laughs> uh, basically, they just get him to, because they need him to take the ship, 
And we find out by the end that it's the little goodie bag of uh, Bo-Katan's looking for the Darksaber, which is what we saw dun, at the dun, end dun. of the first season. That homeboy um, from Breaking Bad, Scott. Frank. Right? Yeah, that, that Gus, Gus Fring. Oh, yeah, Gus. <laughs> <laughs> I love him as a villain. He's so cool. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. This one, the the Stormtrooper slaughter was definitely like a special. Like, they, they, how many guys were on that ship? They killed like, they must have killed 200 people. They, yeah, like, they just, they fucked them up. Which It was awesome. Going back in the episode before, like when you first era introduced Bo Katan and all the other Mandos with her, that scene where they just take the ship uh, yeah. and save Grogu or Baby Yoda at that mm-hmm. point, because mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie, as soon as baby he pushes Baby Yoda into that monster in the sea's mouth, I was like, good. How does it feel, you little <laughs> shit? <laughs> how do you like right? being eaten? <laughs> That's kind of Man. funny. I was definitely pissed. I was like, how are you going to do that to a little baby? But you're right. Like, yeah. Yeah. No. But, uh, and then, and they all come and save him. And like, it's uh, like yeah. the wire work that they're doing with the jetpacks and everything is just so cool. And, it, yeah. and just seeing yeah. them all work as a team is awesome. It's yeah. cool how, like, it, it really like drove home, like, that scene, especially of like how good the Mandalorians are at, like, you know, warfare and stuff. Like, they're just, they're just like, they're just be- they're like Spartans, you know. They're just better than everybody else. So it was cool to see, like see that in action finally, and see some like people from his home world. That's a really good comparison. I didn't think of they're, they're like yeah. Spartans oh, yeah. with like the no, the, the way they look and everything. But then you find out that the whole the Mandalorian's whole identity is like out of this like cult. Like they're lunatics. Yeah, they're yeah. lunatics. Yeah, like, they're like, oh, he's one of the special ones. Like right, he's yeah. This guy doesn't want to take off his helmet. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> and it's cool because at that moment, at least for me, because like I know Bo- who Bo Katan is, and I've I watched all those cartoons. So like. At that point, when Mando's like, you're not a Mandalorian, you take your helmet off. It's like, nah, bitch, she knows way more than you, dude. I'm totally <laughs> yeah. on her yeah. side at that point in the episode. Yeah, And it's, it's just funny seeing seeing that that little point of view switch where it's like, oh, shit. Because, yeah. like, Bo-Katan was there during the Clone Wars. Right. Mm-hmm. She's old as fuck. And mm-hmm. so it's like, she she knows who Obi-Wan is. She knew who all of these Jedi were and shit. Yeah. And so it's it's just, like, it's it's cool to see that from a character yeah. who knows nothing about like the jedi he's never seen a jedi or anything like that and he's like so and in his own world like he knew exactly what he was doing he knew his code and everything and then to see three mandalorians in front of him just be like casually take their helmets off it's like oh shit i don't know shit do i they run that new testament shit and he didn't like it (laughs) (laughs) he ain't made it that far yet (laughs) yeah yeah it was it was a really good action episode too i think oh season two had a lot of action like in most of the episodes this was like the first one where it was like a lot of it but um, definitely like that going through that ship, that transport ship and just like all the gunfights and stuff. And the part where they like they lock them all out and then they, you know, all those guys go flying out the they just yeah. the door. Yeah. yeah. I love how many of his plans just like revolve around him having Besker and every, everybody else. He's not, just a human like, shield like, <laughs> every yeah. time. I'm like, why don't you just run all the time? Just like right. you can take it. It's He's fine. A really not superior fighter. It seems like often he's no. just, just a tank. really lucky guy. <laughs> yeah, I got I got he's, an idea, guys. I'm just gonna have this grenade. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold this grenade and just walk towards them and then <laughs> chuck it at them at the end because they can't kill me. Like, what right. a great idea! <laughs> Genius. Yeah, yeah the writing's not the best, but still super fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's basically the whole of that episode. We want to keep going to get into the juiciness of what is cut to come. But the biggest key point is Bo Katan wants the Darksaber, and she also name drops that Mandalorian that Mando goes to find Ahsoka Tano, which uh most people, if you've seen the cartoon, that's a ma- major, major character that comes into play. Um where, but episode twelve, The Siege, it's another Sword of Fetch Quest. <laughs> we're not <laughs> we're not getting to Ahsoka yet. <laughs> um, this one was cool. I mean, they're they're all good, but this one I was like, what happened in this one again? Oh yeah, they forgot they invade the base, and this is where the jeans uh, yeah. guy meme oh, came yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, yeah. So we go back to uh, Navarro, and we see uh, Apollo Creed hanging out still. Uh, and uh, what's her name? Cara Dune. Yeah. <laughs> and uh they've like they've made the the whole city better except for one last imperial base which they want us help to go in it's basically just an action episode mm-hmm. kind of filler episode mm-hmm. nothing really happens except one important thing where you find out um when they hack the computer that the the empire needs uh baby yoda's blood um for something we don't know what a lot of speculation that maybe this because we all know that in the rise of skywalker uh and palpatine's a clone so it's like, is this what is this what they were doing? Is this were they building a Snoke? Were they building a a Palpatine? Like, what 
was it? What did uh, they? Let's, so let's just knows? keep it. Let's just keep it as vague as possible. We don't need to relate <laughs> Mandalorian to the sequel. Let's did just, you did you notice just, the that they they name dropped the the, the uh, midi chlorians though? Yeah, the the M count. The M count. They said he could be able to got a high M count. I was like, I oh my god! I thought we did away with that. I thought we scratched that. <laughs> I, I I like their little uh, their little nods to like the bad things that people made fun Me of. Me too. I think in the first season they made a point like, oh, the like we got to get the high ground, then then we'll like have an advantage because everyone made fun of uh, Obi Wan. It was like, I have the high ground. You right. can't you can't defeat me, Anakin. <laughs> when literally two episodes ago he had the low ground and still won against Darth Maul. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Ridiculous. Wh- whatever. Whatever. He had the what high ground even, and a yeah. double bladed lightsaber. You dumb idiot. Fucking. <laughs> Dude, you know what? You know what the uh, this one's called the uh, this one's called the siege, right? Like, you know what this yeah. made me think of is like, Imperial security is garbage. Like, they literally <laughs> just walked up and got in the elevator, and they're in your base now. You don't have no yeah. guards, like nobody. <laughs> Same thing. They all, like, well, the, the empire sucks. They're bad at their jobs. They're just politicians, dude. They're just trying to rule the world. They're not trying to like be a military. They probably should be, but <laughs> you, you see they, who they hire. The stormtroopers are dumb as hell. Yeah, they, they need <laughs> some better training. <laughs> they can't <Man>. shoot shit <laughs> but uh yeah that was like the biggest like when it comes to the plot point that happened is that that's why they wanted the baby everything mm-hmm. else is just a fun action episode which is pretty cool um mando gets his ship repaired but and then there's a tracker on him which will come into play in a couple episodes dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. boom here we go major episode chapter 13 the jedi we finally get to the planet where ahsoka tano is supposed to be at and they just start out with her they just throw her right in the very opening of this of the episode, and it's fucking awesome. This was the yeah. best episode. Easy. I loved that. I think it, oh I think it was the best episode of the season, or for if sure. not the show. I think I agree. Like, yeah, as like as a whole, because I think there's a sequence later on that I think is better. But as a whole episode, this is probably the best one. You're probably right. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because like it was. You, I expected that we wouldn't see Ahsoka until like the last. You know, I was yeah. like, we're gonna see her for five minutes, and then they open up with her. Yeah, and we get the white lightsabers. She chops a dude in half through a tree and then throws that chunk of a tree at another dude. <laughs> she went ham. She, she was terrifying. She's, She's like, strong, went to the woods, man. Like, because she had a good master. Holy yeah. crap. Yeah. And so, and, and again, all right, we haven't said it, but Rosario Dawson looked amazing. I thought she looked amazing. The yeah. makeup on her, I thought, yeah, was yes, great. Yes, her yes. acting was great. I was like, this, is, this was perfect. I was like, this was perfect casting for her. I yeah. thought she was so good. Yeah. They casted um, her perfectly. The other giant thing that happens, uh, fucking Baby Yoda gets a name. His name is Grogu. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is fine. It's a name, whatever. <laughs> it's a name. Uh, I like um, Baby Yoda personally. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll just keep. I'll just keep sticking with that. But I still want to know why there was Yoda and Yaddle, but then Grogu is so vastly different. Right. Yeah. <laughs> people forget about Yaddle. Eh, but whatever. Yeah, Yaddle died because it just was Yoda uh, in the makeup. Yoda. Yeah. It was Yoda in a wig. Yoda and <laughs> uh, but we get to learn that Grogu was at the Jedi Temple training. So it's like, who saved him during episode three? Was Did he leave beforehand? We don't really know. Um, but that's where Grogu was. Um, and it's cool. We get a Yoda name drop from Ahsoka because Ahsoka knows who Yoda is, obviously. Um, we don't get an Anakin name drop. Ahsoka says something along the lines of, like, she's seen someone go bad. Yeah, so Ahsoka Tano, she is Anakin. 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 Uh, <laughs> she, she is uh, Anakin, Anakin Skywalker's uh, Padawan that was introduced in the Clone Wars, the terrible, terrible movie, but really good show <laughs> afterwards. Um, and she's kind of become this legacy character that kind of just bounces in and out of different Star Wars things. Mm-hmm. Like um, so the Star Wars Rebels show that followed the Clone Wars show wasn't about any of the Jedi there, but she did pop in at one point and um, she just grew this giant fan base of people that loved her character and she had such cool shit. She fought, spoilers for Clone Wars and Rebels, she fought Vader at one point. She Mm -hmm. traveled through time at one point in a weird way. It's very... Star Wars introduced time travel and it's really weird. She has two white, lightsabers yeah. and that's she's my got, shit. She's got, she dual wields. She dual wields <laughs> and she's got white lightsabers And now. she used to um, hold them really badass but then Anakin told her to stop and I hate it. If they, if they want to do, if they want to do a little bit more time travel to just you know like negate the whole sequel, shut series, I'm up, okay, I'm okay, moving I'm forward. forward. Let's do a little bit more time. Don't travel, have time okay? for your rants today. Just, just a bit more, just a bit more. Uh, yeah. So Ahsoka is a really like special character for a lot of people. Um, and so just seeing her in live action. Also, this episode was directed by Dave Filoni, the man yeah. who created her. Mm. Is just an awesome thing. It's like that that the universe let that coming happen. home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's super cool. Um, we learn about Grogu, um, and then she says no, she's not going to train him um, because 
she's just like, eh, no. Find someone <laughs> else, basically. I mean, I guess because she's not really tied to the Jedi anymore. She's kind of right. in that she, middle she's field. She's not a Jedi. She she had good yeah. reasons. Uh, she, there's, there's a lot of backstory that we won't go into just because in this episode, I feel like we should also take it as its own episode and entity. Like, not everyone has seen Clone Wars or Rebels, but there is backstory, obviously, of why she acts the way she does. And basically, the Jedi let her down. So she's not part of the Jedi. She's just kind mm-hmm. of... Who, she's like a wanderer in a way. Oh, a great um, Jedi? Uh-oh. No, those don't exist. They're not real. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, but we do get an awesome... This was... The, like, you, I think Devin was saying, this is probably the best episode. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's also so well and beautifully shot. This is like yes. a really cool homage to like old samurai movies yeah, as definitely. well. So cool. That last fight between Ahsoka mm-hmm. and... Funny enough, her name is Morgan, which is weird in Star Wars. <laughs> My name's uh, Ahsoka. My name Karen. is... Morgan. Morgan. <laughs> uh, uh, that awesome Star. fight where we get introduced that that spear of pure Beskar, which I'm like, that's gonna come back at some point. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. That whole fight was really well done and and awesome. Yeah. And and uh, and you get Michael Bean from Terminator t- fighting Mando in their their little duel, which is Mando just took him out. But God, he was yeah. fucking useless. What a waste he, of a cool character. He didn't do anything. <laughs> he just walked around yeah. this big ass gun. I think he pointed at a few things. Yeah, dude, all those like all like the standoff shots. Like there were so many standoff shots of like them on the walls and her down below, and then like her, you know, over here. Yeah, and them all. It was there in a very posse. samurai. It was a really cool episode. That episode was so awesome. But then, I mean, the end of it, she says like when she beats Morgan, she's like, "Where's Admiral Thrawn?" So that's like that's Thank the start you. of her own. Yeah you know, spinoff thing, which I cannot wait for. Uh, that's a giant name drop. Uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn is a massive villain that had been introduced in like books and that stuff that's not canon anymore. Mm-hmm. But then he was the big bad in the Rebels cartoon show as well. And a lot of people speculated that this particular episode took place before the last episode of Rebels just because it made more sense. So people speculated that. And so Thrawn, we don't know where Thrawn is by the end of Rebels. He kind of disappears. Yeah. Um, and so, like we talked about before, during the whole Disney stuff, um, Star Wars has a million shows now, and a lot of them are going to be interconnected. So we're getting an Ahsoka show. We're getting a, a Rebel, uh, Mandalorian Season 3. We're Book of Boba Fett. Fett. And a lot of people are speculating that they're all going to tie in in the big bad and that, a la Avenger style, will be Admiral Thrawn. <laughs> I mean, he, he looks like Thanos, so that'd be a good move. Right, well, yeah. What, what race is Thrawn? I know he's just blue. He's blue. I think yeah. he's part of the blue man group. <laughs> I was trying to look and I couldn't find his race. I don't remember what race he is. I just know he's blue. (laughs) I'll tell you, though, the book series, so I actually read the trilogy that um, he came out of. Yeah, yes. the yeah, I hear that's so good. It's it's good. It's good, yeah. It's but it was before he wrote it, Timothy Zahn wrote it before any of the prequels. So like the Clone Wars means something completely different in those books. Like the clones were like this like wave of unstoppable power that were like where they were like rolling over the galaxy. Like the clones could be born in like full adult in like a day. And like he, he, cause he, wow. he had one line in a new hope to like write it all from. And so right. a lot of the story is, is Thrawn trying to, uh, you know, reawaken the clones that in a bad way that, you know, but it seemed like it was just written differently. I don't know. It's cool. It's a cool, uh, cool series. Right. Yeah, no, I get that. Uh, and then the next thing, Ahsoka tells Mando, go to this planet, Typhon, put the baby on this rock and he'll, he'll, he'll reach out <laughs> to someone. To touch him, and he's gonna be there uh, for a Jedi way. Time. And yeah. if you're lucky, <laughs> untouchable. If you're lucky, <laughs> someone will him in a Jedi way. <laughs> right. Um. And so, Balaam, there you go. There's Mando. He he got his objective checked on his quest log. Yeah. And now he's got somewhere somewhere else to go. <laughs> Turn that in for ten thousand XP. Let's go, boys. That brings us to chapter fourteen, the tragedy. Man, I did not think he'd get to Typhon that fast. I was like, oh, that what a refreshing idea. He actually yeah. got somewhere <laughs> within the episode. Wow, he went straight that was great. To where he needed to go. Uh, this is another giant highlight of an episode. Um, so he gets there, puts Bo- uh, Grogu on the rock. Grogu starts to big blue light starts reaching out. Shit starts to happen. Deep meditation. Yeah, shit starts to happen. Uh, and then who fucking comes but fucking Boba Fett? Yes, he's back. He's not. He he wants his armor back because Mando's got it. Uh, he's also back with uh um Fennec the the sniper sniper bounty hunter, right? Yeah. From season one, yeah. We thought she was dead. She clearly is not. She's got like a weird cyborg belly, which I don't know how she eats, What, whatever. It doesn't make sense in Star must, Wars. That must be rough. <laughs> um, it's Star Wars. And so, <laughs> yeah. So he's like, I want my armor. And Mando's like, you're not a Mandalorian, yada, yada, yada. And uh, they decides, I'll give you the armor if you help protect the kid. Uh, but before any of that can happen, 
Uh, the tracker that was on uh, Mando's ship. Oh, yeah, they're here. Now they're going to attack. But we finally get to see Boba Fett do something mm-hmm. <laughs> in this episode. He's finally, like, officially back, and he's not a fucking schmuck of a waste of time. Yeah, badass as <laughs> shit. He is such a weird character to simp. I don't know why we love Boba Fett or Jango Fett as much as we did. I mean, I Dude. guess he has People just like the way he like- looked back then. When it comes to live action, all Boba Fett did was stand there and then die. And then die. <laughs> Same with Jenga. In the lamest yeah, yeah. way possible. Stood there, shot one rocket. It was pretty cool. I think I think in the uh if you just look at the original trilogy alone, there's so much like backstory that you can come up with in your head to imagine like how cool this character is. Mm-hmm. I th- yeah, I, I want to see some of that though. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But sometimes not seeing it's more powerful and I respect that. That was an interesting thing. They actually talked about the lore here um talking about how Jenga was actually a founder. Yes. Um, a Mandalorian founding. So yeah, that he was is so dope. A Mandalorian, which was something that people always thought that he was just a fake ass. Right. They thought he stole the, Django. His father stole the armor, but not them. Just kept it. He an OG. They've they've made it. Yeah. Official. Still got his head yeah. chopped off though. They both go out like bitch. It sucks. <laughs> they suck. It's, who cares? I'm I just upset because now I can't make fun of Boba Fett as much as I want to because he's actually done something efficient now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he's kind of a badass. He's real, honestly. The dude is that, sick. That whole like twenty minute sequence of all of them just kicking stormtrooper. It was like it was like the it was like the stormtrooper armor like, is made out of paper mache. He Holy was shit. cracking skulls, man! <laughs> oh my god! Before before he even got that armor, he's just whacking people with that stick over and over yeah. <laughs> with his golf club. He's like, you know what? I don't even need a gun. I'm just gonna hit him in the head. Swack! Imagine having a full army and you get your ass beat by Tiger Woods. How awkward. Yeah. And then, yeah, you do get that awesome moment where he suits up, he's back in the armor, mm-hmm. and he just kicks ass for like five minutes straight. Yeah. <laughs> and uses the rocket. Got him. Uses and the rocket. And he uses the rocket. I love it. I like how he even admits that he missed the ship yeah. and he hit the wrong one. I'm like, see? He's, he's, a luck, he's just all luck-based, too. Because how do you to escape a Sarlacc pit, honestly? The helmet yeah. adds uh, plus five luck points. <laughs> yeah. but no, I'm telling you, that, that new paint job that he gets at the end, whew, that is a oh, good look. Yeah, it was, it was... I love how I he's still, like, kind of overweight. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, yeah. I love... He looks... I'm like, he just, like, him being so, like, massive still, like, it's just a different kind of intimidation than he was yeah. before. Yeah. I'm like, I love it. I love the look. He looks dope. Yeah, I'm all about it. That, that quarantine weight... <laughs> Yeah. Fat country guy now. Oh, and we finally get to see how I don't know if it's in that episode, but we finally get to see how Slave One like works, like the the ship. Because like I hate that ship, and it's like a, I hate that ship. It's like a, I hate the look of it. I hate it. Look, it's real stupid. It looks like they. Just why is it called it Slave plan. One for one that. reason? For and in particular, like that's also we, like that whole fuck that ship. I don't care. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> I like it. I like it. It's oh, cool. Like, I've always liked. I've always liked that ship. I thought it was one of the coolest designs. Just the Star weird Wars. flatness of it is weird than how it flies around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weird design. It makes no sense. I hate. It looks like a stapler. It's not very aerodynamic. <laughs> <laughs> stapler. Um, so it was definitely cool seeing Boba Fett back. I bet everyone who's a massive Boba Fett fan just like feels so like vindicated now. I yeah. would imagine. Yeah. I felt. Like, I felt really good. Listen, it yeah. it, it changed me. Yeah, because I I went from not caring about Boba Fett at all to being like I can't wait yeah. for this. Yeah, yeah. look up Bubba. I was like, this guy is. Yeah, I'm excited. Badass. He yeah, it was, and I'm glad like for like he gets his redemption. It's, like not just Boba Fett's redemption, but also. Because Timur Morrison never played Boba Fett. This is actually his first time playing Boba Fett. He was just Jango Fett, and so he also gets to kind of redeem mm-hmm. how shitty Jango Fett was in that in the prequels by being such a badass here. So it, yeah. it, it's pretty sweet. They, this whole this yeah. very season has been a lot about redeeming certain qualities of Star Wars. And I like um, I like how he's doing his own like accent because like I know the original Boba Fett was just like probably some some white guy, but I like that yeah he was just he's New Zealand. Being All the clones yeah. are from New Zealand now. Yeah. <laughs> I've always loved that about uh, that actor yeah he's great aquaman's dad oh uh, <laughs> moana's dad too <laughs> true don't forget yeah. so yeah and then that's like the, that's this whole episode is just a battle and then the major thing is that uh grogu gets taken he gets <laughs> no, taken man. by the dark troopers they take him no. away those dark troopers looked dumb as shit yeah they're kind of they look like bionicles they look like some walmart brand ass like i don't like you them know, evil robots like it's like what is this like a 1950s like you know i mean they were terminators they were terminators black spray paint. yeah they, yeah they, i they, they, cool. they could have looked a little better but i i would imagine that's a budget thing mm. um but considering they're, I'm a, they're full CG. I don't think there's dudes in those suits. 
I think they're full CG. I mm-hmm. mean, like, I'll take it. We just have so many cool droids. I feel like those were the, the weakest yeah. looking ones out of droids. Like, you could have used maybe, like, HK <laughs> units or something like that. I was that. laughing when I first cool. saw them. I was like, but... they look like uh, the bad guy uh, in Toy Story that Buzz's father. <laughs> The top, the head <laughs> yeah. part looks like what's his name, Zerg or whatever from Toy Story. Oh, uh, that's funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, they really. Uh, do. Yeah. So that's that episode. Then uh, we get to chapter fifteen, the Believer. Uh, this this episode is kind of it's fine. There's not a lot of major stuff, so I have nothing to say except except it might have one of the best scenes in this whole season, and it comes from fucking Bill Burr. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. scene with Bill Burr, I was like, holy <sighs> shit! Look at Bill Burr acting his ass off in this scene. <laughs> Acting his ass off, and I gave him so much shit last. You season, did, so you I, did. I, I apologize. I think he's a cool character. I still don't like him. As an actor. I mean, yeah, he's just, it's, yeah, he's just Bill but... Burr. But that particular scene where he's talking to his uh, uh, former commander mm-hmm. or admiral, whatever it is, and the admiral's just like, "Yeah, I w- it was fine letting everyone die. Who fucking who cares?" And then I was like, "Oh no, what's gonna happen?" And he just lays him out. He just. And I was like, yeah. oh, well, that happened. Now we got to escape. <laughs> but his, him, his, and he's acting with like no, no, no dialogue. He's, mm-hmm. it's just that the look he has on his yeah. face. I'm mm-hmm. like, good for you, Bill Burr. Nice. The, the other major thing is Mando takes his helmet off. Um, yeah. For it. Yeah. Oh, in, in front yeah. of it. Yeah. Got real sweaty. I, would, I do want to know. Uh, so the Empire security system works on just any person's yeah, eyes? I, right? I thought that was kind of like, stupid. Like, what? Like, why do you what? need any? The password is password. We just need a human to do this. What we the just fuck need is to that? see what he's willing to do to help Grogu. But like, yeah, that was dumb as shit. Like writing. <laughs> yeah, that that was one yeah. of the weaker writing points for sure. I agree. 100%. But I liked it though. I liked it. I mean, I like that he fu- he took his helmet off and he just didn't question it. But I was just like, oh, he's just done. Okay. Yeah. I really, I really wanted it to like him to take his helmet off and like to go through that journey. But then it'd be like, uh, you are not. Uh, we don't recognize you. Password denied. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd be like, oh, shit. The alarm goes yeah, off right. anyway. Doesn't work. But it was a cool dichotomy of character there because you see Mandalorian is such mm-hmm. a strong-willed, mm-hmm. like, confident person. And you see him kind of yeah. be a little bit of a pussy uh, <laughs> throughout this whole the scene of watching him kind of go through and be really yeah. nervous and be, not be you know, not yeah, really talking, not looking anybody in the eye anymore. I like, he, he's, he was giving Bill Burr the same look. I'm pretty sure that everyone in the audience watching was, was like, Bill, Chill out. Don't do it. <laughs> He's got his look on his face like, don't do it. Please don't do it. Don't shoot him now, please. Because uh, he was about to blow it. And then RIP to the sand trooper just wanted to eat his lunch. He like turns around. He's just sitting there oh. with his tray. Like, oh, right. no. This is going to be a bad Monday. This, <laughs> this was a nice episode where we finally got to see that from sort of from the Empire's point of view. Because like, I don't know if, about you guys, but I kind of found myself cheering in a way when the TIE fighter saves them and they finally get to their destination and they're like, all the Empire, those stormtroopers are all cheering, like, yeah, you made it when they're transporting that thing. Mm -hmm. And it's weird seeing the Empire from that point of view and you're like, yay, we did it, sort of. We're happy, but also (laughs) you're the bad guy. So Mm -hmm. I like how they've been doing, they did that this season. Yeah. And it kind of reminds you that outside of like the the Admiral and people like that, Bill Burr, people that also regular people, they're just people doing their job. Uh, and that kind of sucks. That like, yeah, that's the the casualty of war. Or some of these people are just people trying to eat their fucking lunch on a Monday. And right? Did anyone blasted. else think that <laughs> those pirates that were trying to steal the shit were not? I thought that was gonna come around like they were not bad people. They just yeah didn't want the empire to survive <laughs> or something. I'm like, I don't know how mm-hmm. I feel about this. I didn't right think now. about that. That's really true. And we yeah, were I was, murdering them. I don't know. They called them yeah because they and they even had a line in there like when they passed through like a settlement or something. It's like oh, this used to be somebody else's land and now you know. All well, the empire and like you know hum- mm. like humans colonizing it or whatever. So it's like pirates are probably in the most right. Like you know geopolitically, they're probably in the right here. But like, <laughs> right, so, you know, we're we're just gonna we're gonna call them pirates, and then it's okay to just <laughs> m- murder. <laughs> yeah, a it was. I, I was wondering if that was gonna come back, but it didn't. So yeah, yeah. and uh, Bill Burr tells them where they can find Gideon, uh, the Moff Gideon's ship, because they're trying to find the baby and trying to save him. So that's all they wanted that for. Yeah. And that leads us to the season finale, chapter 16, The Rescue. Uh, fucking Luke Skywalker's back, yes. guys. Like, <laughs> yes. let's just cut straight to the chase. Like, And he's not Sebastian Stan, damn it. I'm okay with it. I will, I'm, I, I'm happy Mark Hamill got to do one awesome, badass thing as, like, Luke Prime, quote-unquote, with the green lightsaber. Oh, I yeah. cried. Hell yeah. I cried. I'm assuming that's probably your favorite scene throughout the whole thing was him fighting all the... Yeah, that sequence, the hallway sequence where... 
He's feeling like a like he he's just copying what Vader did in Rogue One with that hallway. <laughs> yes, and I'm like, yes. like father, like son, boy, go and do it, do it. <laughs> I yeah. think it was the most video game scene of this entire episode because it shows like Mandalorian being under leveled and getting fucking <laughs> blasted by these death troopers, <laughs> and then you got this level 100 motherfucker in full epic gear just going through and just wrecking everything. And I'm just I like, okay, the side like, wow, the power divide. I got a lot of grinding to do. It was just so. It, it was just like because like for me like. Uh, you guys know, like, like Obi Wan and Luke are my my favorite Star Wars characters of all time, and me particularly, Luke with the green lightsaber is all I've wanted mm-hmm. for like so long, <laughs> which is why, like, uh, the the new trilogy, I was like, God damn it, just, just give me something with Luke, please. Yeah. And so this was this like this made me cry when I watched. Yeah. I was like, fine. Yeah. I just felt I just felt so like this was like a lot of people like that Boba Fett moment was their moment for mm-hmm. me. This moment was for me. Yeah. Like I just like. I'll take this. Hell nice. fucking yes. We want to see a Neo moment with Luke. Luke yeah. is like Neo. He's right. seeing yeah. the strongest version. My of God, the Luke version. is strong as shit. Right. <laughs> yes. Like, and it was great because we had never gotten to see that before. Like even Return of the Jedi, mm-hmm. he had, he was just like figuring it out, like how good yeah. he could be. Also, it was made in the 70s. So it's the choreography is not what it could be. Today. Right. They kept breaking the lightsabers. <laughs> but still, like, you know, he was taking the risk because he was he was banking that, you know, Vader would like support him in the end, which he did. But like still. We never got to see full power Luke, and this was full power Luke. Like this yeah, was totally. prime oh. full power Luke oh. when he just full on force chokes that last dark trooper and just crushes he was flexing, it. Flexing, dude! Oh my that goodness, was that yeah. was amazing! Like, ugh, and like so well shot, and like the mute, the music was uh, that new theme that they introduce is so like very ominous and like, but also like. So it's like, is this a bad guy? Like, what's, it was very yeah, ominous, yeah. but also still kind yeah. of full of hope by the end. It was just so... Ugh. I mean, because yeah. that was kind of the thing from their perspective. is like, we've never met a Jedi before. Or like, you know, some of them have, but like Mandalorian didn't. So he's like, this guy's about to come in here and kick our ass. <laughs> like, what, right. What do we do? And only when Grogu's like, oh, it was you who I talked to in the forest, whatever. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, yeah, just, all right, let him in. Let's go. <laughs> but did, did you guys, when, when it first happened, when you first see that X-Wing fly in, did you guys... Say in your head, it's Luke. No. Did you assume it was Luke? Unfortunately, it was spoiled for me. Yeah, so. me too. Uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty much every big plot point was spoiled for me because of Instagram oh. and you know social media. But it, I, it's kind of my own fault. I took forever to watch it, but um, <laughs> so that was kind of sad for me. I kind of knew all the key characters that were going right. to come. But it was yeah. still super enjoyable. I didn't think it was going to be Luke for some reason at all. So like I had, I had ruled Luke out for entirely, mainly because of yeah. like how the sequels decided to handle his whole story, which you know was another issue. But like anyway, <laughs> the um I so for a little while I I think it was like halfway through like when he's going through the hangar and like uh, I think even after he like reveals his lightsaber, I still thought it was like Ezra, like I thought it was Ezra for the oh. longest time until and probably until the elevator. When I first saw the X wing, I was like. Okay, it, it, Ahsoka wouldn't have an X-wing, but like, like, mm-hmm. I, I, like you, Devin. I was like, logistically, there's no way they're gonna do Luke. What are yeah. they gonna do? CG yeah. face? What are they gonna do with him? <laughs> I had, yeah. like, so I was like, there's no way they'll do it. But yeah. then in my head, I was like, maybe it's. I was like, I don't know if it's gonna be Ahsoka. Uh, who would it be? Is it gonna be someone like uh, from like the video games? Like the um, what's the dude's Kyle name Katarn. from Kyle Katarn or yeah. or from the video game that Al? Oh, Cal was Kestis. Cal Kestis. Him, yes. Cal Kestis from the, really cool. the Redhead Boy, Jedi yeah, Fallen yeah, Order. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, dope, I was like, is it gonna be someone from like in canon? But like, God, they wouldn't be able to do that because no one knows who the fuck that is. Yeah. He's such a good like, actor. outside of like mainstream. No one knows who that is. I'm just like, but that's this is why this is why it's great that Filoni is in charge because he gets to do this moment and like say like let's yeah. give the fans the full Luke Skywalker that they've never gotten to see before. If this is Mark Hamill's last Luke Skywalker performance ever. He ended on a high. Ended on high tip, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I sure hope it's not though. <laughs> yeah, Man. I mean, if they're go- the, I mean, well, I would, taste, I, I, would I would imagine if they're gonna continue with a young Luke, they have to recast. They're not gonna continue yeah. the CG face of it. Yeah. Because granted, it was it looks fine, but you can clearly tell that it's a CG face. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not too many close ups, yeah. guys. Right. Yeah. That's the thing. They always have to do a real still shot whenever they do it. They tried it with yeah. Uh, it just Carrie looks Fisher, weird. And it was kind of awkward, and they tried it again with what's his face, and it's kind of awkward. So it's like, yeah, yeah. It's something I, with it's like the eyes in the forehead area. It's like mm-hmm. they because they try not to move so much, so it's like just their mouth is moving. So it just yeah. looked, it, it looked yeah. something off. Right. Yeah, but it, it was pretty good though. And then that whole the whole moment there at the end where like you know he says goodbye, he takes his helmet off, and oh, so man, sweet, that was so emotionless. Like dang. it was so good. And like. For a second, I was like, I don't know. I thought Luke was also going to be like, I can't take him. And then, you know, and then you got to keep up with this, the format. But now they're like, you know, they're no, like the 
Baby Yoda and Mando, that plot, that, that part of the show is over. That phase of the show is over. That's what I was, I, when I first saw it, I was like, I would, in a world, I don't know if they'll do it because Baby Yoda makes too much money for them. Yeah. <laughs> but in a world, I could see that this is the end of Grogu. This is, mm-hmm. the, this is the last time you see Baby Yoda. He says, I'll see you again. So I know, yeah, they, it's they true. Wouldn't, I feel like they wouldn't say that without. It'll be a cameo. Oh, he's coming back. Yeah, I have to imagine that he's, that baby is coming back. In He'll probably way. come back at the very end of the last episode. I just don't season. know how they'll do it without bringing Luke back as well. He'll have yeah. a lightsaber. Yeah. <laughs> like, are they going to do CG face again? Like, well, like I, I can't imagine they get that baby back without seeing Luke again. And I don't know if they'll want to do gonna that happen again. is Luke's going to come to Mando. He's going to be like, well, hey, listen, you know, I just need you to babysit Grogu for a little while. I gotta go, <laughs> I'm going to go wake up uh, my uh, my nephew and possibly try to kill him at the same time because that's exactly <laughs> something that I would do. So, uh, yeah, so just hold him for a second. I'll be right back. When Luke first took him, I'm like, so Grogu's going to get killed by Kylo Ren, right? God, fucking <laughs> driver. I'm that's why, that, was, that was another reason why I was like, they're not gonna, it's not going to be Luke. Because like, they wouldn't do that to Grogu. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. You know? uh, I'm, I'm hoping he escaped somehow uh, right. before, uh, yeah. right. before that all or, happened. You know, yeah. Or this could all just be in a separate reality. That's Shut because up. Of travel. <laughs> get a real comic book about it. Please don't. <laughs> Shut up. Please Accept do. it. It's there. Please do. Uh, the best scene for me in the entire season. Second, if not tied for the best episode of the season, just because we 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 went straight to it because that's the biggest moment. But before that, so much good shit happens where one of the highlights are we get a full action sequence with four women kicking ass. Mm-hmm. And it's so awesome. We get the two Mandalorians in Bo-Katan and I can't remember what the other girl is. Bo-Katan name is one of my favorite characters. I think She's she awesome. kicks a lot of ass. She's pretty dope. Uh, I didn't think I was going to like her as much as I did. She's awesome. Though something, something about her uh, motives, I'm like, I feel like you might like stab somebody in the back at some point. <laughs> she is very, yeah, just like from the cartoon, she's very headstrong. But um, speaking of her motives, she clearly wants the Darksaber, which is why she said before, I need to take out Gideon. Leave him for me. Yeah. And so when Mando fights him, with the spear, finally, we finally get that duel, and he wins. In the back of my head, I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> Final, just boss. because like I had already, I had prior knowledge of how the dark saber works. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm like, "Oh, she gonna be pissed." That's a little like hypocritical because she's like, "Oh, you don't take your helmet off because you're like, you know, beholden to ancient right. customs of the Mandalorians." Well, and then it's like, "Well, here, I want to, I forfeit. Here's the the dark saber." No. I have to defeat you in ritual combat. He's like, take the goddamn dark saber, girl. It's not that serious. Yeah. <laughs> like, just chill the fuck out. I thought about this because she has taken it from someone who's just handed it to her in the cartoon. She yeah. did that once. But she lost it in combat is the thing, right? So she has to win it back in combat. All right, well, so, I, okay, maybe, so, yeah. So fight him, and then just, like, he just doesn't fight back. He just like, falls down. Ah. You're just like, oh, no, <laughs> you beat me. Like, that's the same thing as forfeiting. Like, come on In now. I think it was in Rebels, she willingly takes the dark saber from someone who's giving it to her without fighting her. Yeah. She's like, takes it. She t- takes it from her. And I would imagine like, because something happened in that time period after she had it, cause she doesn't have it. So she, maybe she lost it and she yeah. feels like a failure. And she's like, maybe it's because I didn't do it in this traditional way where I was supposed to win yeah. it. Yeah. Maybe that's why this all happened. So I can't do that again. Right. Maybe like she that cursed, thinking, she cursed Mandalore by taking it that way. You know, I was doing right. some I was doing some reading about this actually, and she had it, and then there was like some kind of Mandalorian purge and the Empire right. like took over the, the planet and she lost it, and that's when the Empire got it or whatever. And uh the fact that Mandalorian was the next person to defeat somebody in combat, that means that he is like technically the strongest Mandalorian. So right. he's the rightful right. uh heir to the throne. So in right. order for, for him to just give it away would mean that there's still a stronger Mandalorian being Mando. Yeah. So yeah. He has to be beaten. Right. By but that, no, that's what I'm saying. It's like she has taken it from someone who she hasn't beaten in the past. Why does she not want to do it now? Yeah. You know? that'll, so but that'll it, be a fun point of conflict for, I think, yeah. you know, maybe because, because she feels like she cursed it last time that she has to do it the right, right way this time. I don't know. Yeah. I do think it's, uh, it was a very clever way of writing of how they wrote Boba Fett out of this episode. So that you don't get that weird and awkward conversation when Luke shows up and Boba Fett's there. <laughs> and Luke's like, what the fuck? I'm going to have to kill this guy. I was again. like, what? That's, that's some clever writing. You guys, yeah, all right. You have thought about that. about that. What was he doing this episode? He, he, he pretends like to be attacking them at the beginning. 
And then he just dips the fuck out so that they can they can oh, crash the ship yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. What if Luke just walks in and the first thing he does is just rocks him in his face, just punches right. him in his shit. Right. I'm like, yeah. oh, <laughs> as much as I would love to have seen that, I, that was the way to do. Maybe it, they would have been like, "Hey, what's up, man? Like, you know that shit that happened." <laughs> Sorry it's about fine. that whole Sarlacc <laughs> pit thing. Uh, <laughs> Sarlacc pit. Bro. I mean, yeah, that would no. have been kind of cool though too, because you had two conflicts. You had a Luke and Boba conflict, then you would have yeah. had a Boba and a exactly. Mandalorian conflict. Exactly. To be continued. It, it would have been interesting. Can we, can we talk about Moff Gideon's whole plan here? He's like, well, my plan is to let them take the entire ship. And then <laughs> mean- I'll be hiding in the cell with Grogu. I'll let Mando unshackle him. And then I'll try to hit him in the back, leading to a one-on-one duel, which then he'll beat me at. And then the drama between him and Bo-Katan will be my actual plan. I was like... You are dumb as hell. You mean the man who had a plan until he didn't have a plan and then just improvised? (laughs) You know they're coming for you. Boot up those death troopers to like do patrols the whole fucking time. You got no problems. Like clown, clown. The bad guys in Star Wars are famously not the best bad guys. If anything, he was probably the biggest disappointment when it came to like, like, cause the whole first the, early in the season, and even at the end of the first season, it's like, oh my god, he's gonna be the big bad. He's gonna be awesome. And then by the end, he's like, oh yeah, you just kind of winged it at the end there. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there's, he, there's, he was that's all you had. I was, I was kind of disappointed by his character. Like he, yeah. I thought yeah. he'd be a lot smarter than that. Like he, and they hyped right. him up like that too. But. I mean, he's still alive, so maybe. But I have a feeling like this is probably the end of Moff Gideon in this way. Yeah, yeah. Um, he got kind of wrecked, yeah. and it was kind of stupid. He'll he'll be yeah. on Team Mando next year. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It makes me really excited for the new season uh, whenever mm-hmm. that comes out. Yeah. And for all the new spinoffs. Yeah, I think it's December is when it's supposed to start. They're starting okay. later than they normally would. Yeah, I think they're doing Book of Bubba. They're going to release that first, right? Yeah, yeah, so that's the very end. We get the little, almost like a Marvel after credit scene where we get the reveal of the Book of Boba Fett, a new series that is mm-hmm. coming out next December. Or Do this we call December. it a series? Isn't it only like four episodes? I don't know. Oh, I think wow. it's really short. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. Because I, I looked it up like instantly afterwards. I liked how the the person that took over Jabba's because he goes back to he goes back to Tatooine and goes back to Jabba's palace mm-hmm. and the the what's his name? Is that like Gibbs Fortuna, s- the weird, snail snake like the weird guy. slug head guy, has also. It's like you have to be fat to sit in that chair. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, he takes over and then Boba and shows up and just. There takes him out and then he sits in his throne. He's King Boba basically and and that's how that finale ended. I, was I, like, I love that. Crazy. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. But I do wonder is is that mean Boba's going to be the villain or is he going to be an anti like I don't yeah. I don't know what's going to happen with that. Yeah. yeah I He's think he's going to fuck up people that wronged him probably and yeah. it's going to be cool. Uh, kind I'm of like a punisher kind of thing. I'm assuming since it's called the Book of Boba Fett, it's maybe part of it will be like it's a, like a like a story. It's like he's telling us. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll find out how he escaped the Sarlacc pit or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, definitely. Know, he hadn't written definitely. that yet because it think sounds about like it. a weird cult religion. I'm not gonna lie, the Book of Boba <laughs> Fett. <laughs> yeah, but I think either way we're gonna be rooting for him because like it's it's Disney again. So you know they're not gonna make us like he'll he might be like an anti hero, but they already kind of did that with Mando. But like he'll be maybe a, bit, a little bit more brutal or something. But we're gonna be rooting yeah. for Boba Fett. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm excited for it though. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, it looks dope. So yeah, I think that that's pretty much it. That's that's all of Mandalorian season two in a a really quick nutshell. Sort of, we've yeah. missed a lot of things, but we could talk about the show for a long time. Big yeah, thing, a lot of shit. I think I got from this is continue with the fan service. The fan service is definitely working in their favor. Yeah, um, and definitely. I think with nostalgia and stuff as well, that's really helping with it because mm-hmm. I did not expect to see any characters I recognize in this show. Uh, <laughs> I would never have thought Luke was going to show up in this right, show. Right, especially Definitely. Luke, a main character in a main series like that. Oh, I forgot. Uh, we forgot to mention R2-D2 shows up because, <laughs> yeah. you know. Oh, yeah, definitely. That was awesome. Nice nice little moment at the end. You get R2 and everyone's favorite droid. And yeah. uh, no C-3PO because he sucks, so it's fine. No, he's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we say goodbye to, to, to baby Grogu, baby Yoda. Bye. For now. Maybe. I'll miss him. Uh, just tune in next season when Mando has to escort another child <laughs> oh, somewhere God. else. The baby toads. I, I do hope next season is a little tighter, but I doubt it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's more side quests. Um, I'm excited to see how they're going to interconnect all these other Star Wars shows, like the Ahsoka mm-hmm. show and, and this show and the Boba Fett show, if they are going to. It sounds like they're going to interconnect them all. That'd be awesome. Um, so I, I, I just wonder how they're going to release them all. Mm-hmm. Are they all going to come out the same day? Are they coming out? Are we getting like, are we getting four Star Wars shows released weekly? No, the next maybe. They'll, or whatever? So. They'll check know. it out. One season a year, one show a year. 
No, that wouldn't make that. That would take That's forever. <laughs> it would be like uh, five years before we found out that. <laughs> they'll do it. So they'll release them so that you never are tempted to cancel your Disney Plus membership. That's exactly yeah. how I think they're going to go about it. Monday, yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is going to be Star Wars days. Yeah. <laughs> right. The rest of, as long as there's a the new rest Star of your Wars life. content coming out all the time, I, I, I can't ever cancel this. So I, I've tried to like figure it out on a calendar. It's like, all right, if I cancel for these two weeks, then I make up <laughs> by being weekly and not having to pay for the year. And it's, it's, I was like, oh, damn it. Disney got me. You did. Yeah. <laughs> You've already done too much work. That was great, guys. That was a lot of fun. Great mm -hmm. show. Uh, I can't wait for season three. Yes, yes indeed. Yeah. Shall we move on to our, our, our next segment of the show? Let's do it. Free for all. Uh, see you later, Alex. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, it's weird that you just come and go as you please, but whatever. See, yeah, we'll, oh, see yeah. we'll see you see next Alex. week. <laughs> Good see Bye, you. Bye, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I wanted to say one thing real quick about, because uh, we were just talking about Mandalorian, about that Ahsoka fight. Uh, it's good, but also, why d is she honorable, and why does she decide to have a lightsaber battle with her when she could just throw her across the planet? With force? No, it was it was just a flex. <laughs> it was just a flex I'm from sorry. Ahsoka. Like, I guess so. To keep like, it she, like, she knew she had it. Fair enough. It was an old enough. school duel. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're moving on to our final segment of the week, which is free for all. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> in this segment, <laughs> we can kind of do whatever we want. Uh, we can talk about what we did in the past week, uh, anything we've watched, read, blah, 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 a rant. Devin could rant about Star Wars some more, but we'll probably just. There's not enough time for that. Yeah, that's not enough time. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's free for all. Uh, who would like to, to go first? Well, I'll go first. Okay, go. Fuck Who? you, Devin. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I love you, man. But I'll go first. Just because it's on my mind, and I've been thinking about it. So I don't play many video games. Uh, I try my best, but I suck at <gasps> video games. I have beaten Wait, a video game, boys. The game has oh, been completed. Sound the alarm! <laughs> the game I finally completed uh, was Divinity Original Sin 2. And holy fuck, that game is pretty good. Pretty good. That didn't sound like uh, Witcher 3 Wild Hunt to me, Brian, so I uh, No, that game is about 170 <laughs> hours less than that oh, game, while God. still being a pretty fucking long RPG. I think it took me about 60 to 65 hours to beat that game, which is pretty still long, pretty in damn my opinion. Long. Uh, I did a lot of the side quests. I don't think I did all of them, but I did <sighs> quite quite a large portion of them, and it still took me about 65 hours. Jesus, um, if wow. you love RPGs, if you love role-playing just in general... Highly recommend. It has like D and D rules when it comes to like the combat. A lot of people are really interested in that. It's actually multiplayer, so you can play with other people, oh. and you each get to like be your own character, which is kind of interesting. I ain't doing any of that mm -hmm. shit. I play by myself. Uh, fuck y'all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want to have my own role playing life, so that's I played the game myself <laughs> because I didn't want anybody else making decisions for me. Because it is a game that's very decision heavy, <laughs> and your decisions do hold a lot of weight in where the game. How goes. does that work with co op? Like, do people get to decide on the decisions with you? I think maybe you that's just kind of talk to your friends and hope for the best, and whoever wants to make oh, the best shit. decision. So if, if someone's like, "Oh, I watched," I started talking to this guy first, and I'm just gonna say, "Fuck him," and I'm gonna kill him. I guess I guess I guess we killing them. Like I don't I know what to that tell you. Like, is I, over I, now. <laughs> we fighting. I don't know. So, wow. <laughs> it seems interesting. interesting. But yeah, I just really wanted to play for the story because I know it was a game that had a lot of like really good reviews. And I finally it was on sale after a long time and I finally played it. And it was a lot of fun. Like each character has a really interesting, very different story. Oh, there's like hmm. I think six characters total that you can choose from, or you can make your own custom character. Um, I chose one of the preset characters. Uh, her name was Losa. And uh, basically her whole story was the fact that she has like demons in her head and one demon in particular. Don't we all like, know, Brian. To, right. <laughs> but it was like normally she has like what they call sprites in her head. So like she's like a musician, a traveling musician. And then she has like all these sprites and like, you know, whatever come in her head and she mm. makes like, you know, oh cool magic. But then this one oh, like, it sounds really, like very, very persona ish. <laughs> yeah, kind of. But then this one like whatever. strong demon came through and like took over her body and like sure. kind of runs her. So like periodically cool. throughout the game you have to deal with the fact that this person is taking over your body. So there'll be sometimes like I'm playing, I'm usually a good person in video games and uh, I'm playing through. And sometimes the guy would just be like, killer. He just be talking to this woman and he's like, killer. <laughs> and then you have to like pass like all these like skill checks in order to, you know, resist oh, uh, this character. Oh. And if you don't, your character just fucking just, kills the character. Wow. Like, it just fucking <laughs> murders somebody. Wow. Like, How hard like are the that. skill checks? And that, uh, uh, it depends on where it is. If they really don't want you to pass it, it has to be pretty fucking high. Uh, but it, it, it was differing, like, throughout the story, uh, what it kind of wanted you to do. And it was really interesting. So, I'd recommend yeah. it. 
Uh, talking about Eternals, actually, in our news is kind of interesting because there are a race of people called Eternals in that game. Oh, and they huh. seem very similar in that they're like the, the old race of people that are super powerful mm-hmm. and kind of like made. They're seen as gods. Well, there's only so much you can do with the name Eternals. Right, 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 right. <laughs> That's the thing. They're, they're kind of seen as gods and things like that. And I right. Like, I don't want to get too much of spoilers. Great game. If you like RPGs, I definitely recommend. It is pretty That's fucking cool. hard, though. I will let you know that. So if you are not into super hard RPGs, um, right. yes. Uh, because I, it's, cool. it, I would say, like, it's not as hard as a Dark Souls from what you told me because yes, you actually finished this. <laughs> it's, it's different. But also, I played on a pretty easy difficulty. I didn't play on, like, one of the right. harder difficulties, like, strategist mode or whatever the fuck. Um, right, right. But even playing on the mode that I played on, there were still some times where it was just like, this is... This is rough. Like, <laughs> mm. I wish I'd talked my way out of this battle because this battle is hard as shit. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, things like that. That yeah. sounds pretty cool. Interesting. Yeah, that is nice. cool. Devin, what you got? Mine. Uh, let me try to tell it concisely. So, oh boy, <laughs> I, the the viewers might not know. They might. This might be their first. This might be my first. Uh, you know, I'm telling them this is something that I would have been very insecure about like five years ago, but now I've just embraced it and like I tell people about it and whatever. So I collect action figures and like. Uh, I've done it my whole life, like you know, ever since Lord of the Rings, you know, Star Wars, whatever. Yeah. And I just got like, I just saw I had been so for the Witcher three, they had never made like any like action figures. They had like these statues. So I got those like a few of them. But then like recently McFarland Toys, which is probably like the best one right now. They came out mm-hmm. like I saw this week they had come out with like Geralt and Aridin and like Siri from like and from uh, Witcher three. So I got them. Right. Like immediately, like, just shut up, take my money. Nice. <laughs> and it reminded me of like when I was a kid, but also before that, like, okay. So like, like a year or two ago, I also got like, uh, this other co- like, uh, action figure company had made, uh, Kratos from God of War four. And it was like one of the mm. best action figures I've ever seen, like very creatively done, like very well done with like his shield, like the way it fits on his arm and stuff. So I like messaged them. I was like, you guys should do Witcher three. Like, <laughs> like, please do it. Like, Somebody needs to no do it. No shit. And they obviously tell like I was like, hey, I That's love your Kratos figure. Hilarious. Like, please do like Witcher Three. Like, I would love if you guys did it. And they're like, yeah, like we don't take, you know, obviously, like we don't take recommendations. <laughs> oh, like, they shut you down. They broke yeah. your dreams, bro. <laughs> but then it reminded me of like when I was a kid, I did the same thing with like Star Wars. Like, so I I would like I like I got my mom to like set up an email for me so I could like log onto their website and like give them feedback or something. And I had this like very specific. <laughs> Like list of ones that I wanted them to make. So I was hello, like, hello, I like Mister Star Wars. Yeah. I was yeah. wondering if you could make um, Boba yeah. Fett because he's my favorite. And they're like, yeah. shut up, kid. I, I was so specific. It's like you need to make this guy with the same like articulation, like the same like body part movement as like this one that you already made. And like you, it would be really cool if like you included like this gun and like this one on the side. And like I think you should make that. And like, wait, oh. I'm sorry. Are we still talking about you with today or you as a fighter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He so. sent this from his work email. <laughs> but hey, the lesson here is that it worked like through an indirect way. Hey, Another company go. made it probably with, you know, no input from me, but still it, it works. It, <laughs> will it? You I can will hold it. that close to you and just say, yeah. Yeah. yeah I think I, you did have an influence, Devin. Where's your royalties, though? I basically oh, willed true. these into existence. So, you know, there you go, man. It happened. Wow. Yeah. You're welcome. You, uh, you got to use that power wisely, Devin. <laughs> In your next email. <laughs> next on this is like some Rocket League, like RC no, code. No, fuck. Oh, We're gonna, you, uh, you fucked it. You ruined it. it. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to fly too. Like you're going to have like the remote and then they, they just turn into like a drone. And then they just start it's just fucking around. RC cars. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, that's mm-hmm. hilarious. Uh, nice. No, that's really cool, dude. That's awesome. And they looked cool. You showed us to the uh, showed us them. They yeah. looked really awesome, actually. Yeah, very, very cool. Detailed. Uh, me, mine actually, funny enough, is also related to The Witcher. What um, the fuck? Yeah, and I told you guys this a little a little while ago, but I'm bringing it up. Um, I started playing The Witcher, the first Witcher on PC, on my laptop, my jankety old laptop, because I was like, <laughs> that game is pretty old. It probably manage it. It's managing it pretty well. Uh, mostly because uh, I, 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 oh, I never said this before. I read all The Witcher books recently. Um, I finally read all of the books, and uh, just because I I really love that world and that universe, and I always had wanted to get into it, so I finally read all of the books. They're awesome, Devin. You're totally right. It's they're they're mm-hmm. just so good and they're so cool. And then I rewatched the first season of The Witcher on Netflix mm-hmm. as well. Afterwards, I was like, oh my god, yeah, they're yeah, it's pretty cool. 
Um, also, because I, I, I was like, oh, that's who these people are. That's right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and then, so I was just, I was, I've just been going on like a Witcher deep dive where I'm, because mm. I had started Witcher 2 on Alex's old Xbox 360 mm -hmm. in college. And then when we were no longer in college, I never got to finish <laughs> playing that game. <laughs> and so that's, that was only an Xbox exclusive game. So I was just like, well, I'm not playing that game anymore. Oh, well. <laughs> um, and then I got Witcher 3 when it came out like years ago. Mm -hmm. And I started playing that. And you guys obviously know me. I'd never finished it. And so after I read the books, I was like, I'm going to I'm gonna look for the game. And I, like it was like, I got it for like, I got The Witcher and The Witcher 2 on PC for like $4. Yep. Mm -hmm. I was like, mm -hmm. That's, I can do that. I have them forever now. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. <laughs> And so I finally started playing the first Witcher game, and I'm just gonna the, the goal at least. We'll see how far I get before I get burned out. Is to get through them all and finally go back to and finish Witcher mm -hmm. three again. That shit sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> but Witcher, no I feel like Witcher two will be a little bit easier for you though, Oscar, because every area yeah. is kind of finite, and like you can yes. do all the side stuff and then move with the main story and feel good about it. I probably would have finished that in college if yeah. I had more time. Like I was getting through it pretty much. I was, yeah. I think, I was in the second act. Um, Witcher 2 is okay. Yeah. Um, I thought it was a pretty, you know, standard game. Not a bad game at all. Not Nothing like Witcher 3 that's, you know, held as one of the best games of all time. Mm -hmm. But right. I hear Witcher 1 is rough. <laughs> it's it's definitely different. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. even, well, also because I'm not a PC person, so playing with keys is fucking weird uh -huh. <laughs> for me. Right. But um, it's pretty intuitive because um, th this version of it, because it's like an enhanced version, like they've made like modifications for it over time. Mm -hmm. And so it's pretty good. It's not like too complicated, like for me, where I'm like, I, this is why I don't play PC because like every button does a, a million different things. Whereas this one's, it's still pretty streamlined. And so moving around and the combat is pretty simple. So it's not too hard. And so I'm having a pretty good time with it. Um, and it looks, it looks like a PS2 era <laughs> game. <laughs> it probably <laughs> was, P to be honest. Early PS3 era game, but it doesn't bother me. I'm like, uh, so far I've made some choices. I've, uh, kill a lot of things and it's definitely barren uh, yeah. but it, it's, it's pretty fun mm -hmm. um i'm having a decent time with it but the only the bad thing is i'm pretty sure when i when i looked it up to see how long it was pretty sure it'd still take me like 40 hours <laughs> i'm like why is this game so <laughs> long Christ. they're all so uh, long <laughs> you just gotta but start saying no. no oscar you gotta learn how to say no to people i can't no. i'm the witcher <laughs> Devin. i have to <laughs> I have to do every quest I have to yeah. do every minuscule quest. <laughs> I need to be maxed out by the end. But Witcher is one of those games where every side quest is worth doing because they always like wrench at you. Even like Witcher 2, especially like, and Witcher 3, obviously, right. but like, you know, like it's worth doing the whole experience. Like it is worth it. Like, especially because sometimes those quests will affect other quests. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Incomplete uh, opposite of The Witcher, uh, Divinity Original Sin 2. You can get quests from fucking animals. <laughs> what me, the hell? Sorry, 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 sorry. You can talk to animals. <laughs> okay, I was about to say, <laughs> you game. just see a squirrel and you're like, you can I got talk it. <laughs> so where you say Witcher has all the quests and they all matter, there's been times where I've helped a dog find his girlfriend. <laughs> I was going to say, is there one where like a oh squirrel needs God. some nuts or a dog yes. needs a bone? Literally, one of the main characters in your fucking squad is a squirrel <laughs> that talks about saving the world. And you have to help him save the world. And he talks wow. about these things like the great acorn and all this shit that is not real. <laughs> it does not exist in your world. But he always references it. And you're like, sure, man. He rides an that. undead cat as well. Uh, oh <laughs> this game is a lot. This so, game, yeah. wow. That's a lot. Two sides that's, of the same coin, the Witcher yeah. and Divinity Original Sin is, yes. Yeah. That's <laughs> fucking hilarious. Yeah. That's pretty damn great. But um, yeah, so that's just kind of what I've been doing this past week. That's but, cool. Yeah. Let me know that's when you cool. finish it. Yeah, so cool. I want to know yeah. if it's if uh, I should it do might the same take thing. years. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want I want you to update me when you're doing Witcher 2 and like tell when you come to a like uh, well, I can't spoil anything, but like there's a certain moment. Well, never mind. Just like when you're when you're <laughs> when you think you're getting close to the end of the village part, let me know. He is not oh, gonna remember that. Yeah, like yeah. in The Witcher 2. You'll have to the, remind me again. In Act, I think I, it's Act 2. Okay, yeah, because yeah, I think I had just gotten to the beginning of Act 2. Or, yeah. Right, okay. When I when last time I played it, so I didn't get that far. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I think I'm about to get to Act 2 of the first Witcher game, but I don't know how many acts there are, so. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> but, yeah, cool. All right, thanks for, uh, thanks for that, guys. That was fun. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you for listening once again, everyone. Uh, you can email us at thefortressof at gmail.com. Fortress spelled F-O-U-R. 
Um, you can email us any recommendations or any feedback on the show or anything else you'd like to hear. If there's something we missed in the main topic, uh, if you want to just yell at Devin and uh, just do that. Um, <laughs> Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram, also at the Fortress of, and you can also check out our YouTube channel, which is at, oh. uh, not at yeah new info uh, the Fortress of, where uh, we're gonna put like little we'll have little little things up there every now and then. Right now, there's just one video; it's a little short animation. Um, but yeah, we're hoping to have a little more stuff on there in the in the couple probably a couple weeks, couple months, and just uh, yeah. So just keep an eye out on that. Uh, I'm not going to hit say hit the subscribe button. Do whatever you want to do, like, <laughs> but we appreciate it. <laughs> um, yeah, so tell your friends, tell your family, tell your grandma, tell your cat. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, review us wherever you are, uh, uh, unless it's bad. Although I've heard that apparently <laughs> bad reviews also count. So go f- do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? No, 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 there's no such thing as bad news, you know? It's always just like yeah. good good headlines only. <laughs> Jerry Jones strategy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, should I share my Brian? Instagram or or no? No, Brian. <laughs> what's up, man? <laughs> oh, hey. Uh, by the way, uh, if you want to follow me, you can follow me at uh, if it's on Instagram, it's gonna be it's underscore by the way. That is I T Z underscore by the way. Uh, I also have a Facebook page with this it's by the way I T Z I T Z by the way no underscore as well. I'm streaming on Twitch again, actually, if you guys are interested. I'm actually doing Ooh. that again. Um, that's going to be twitch.tv slash by the way X. Um, I'm streaming just kind of random games that I feel like playing. It's uh, actually motivated me to actually play a fucking video game in my life. <laughs> so uh, check that out. I stream uh, a few times a week. Uh, um, my tag is. Will we ever get Devin's Instagram out? Probably not. But it'll be a miraculous day when it happens. <laughs> uh, real quick, thank Brian for the artwork. If you guys Ooh, didn't know, Brian yeah. is the one who designed and did that artwork. Mm-hmm. I drew that shit. It looks amazing. want to thank Alex for the theme music for our intro theme. He did a great mm-hmm. job with that. Mm-hmm. And we want to thank Jackie, our sound engineer, for helping out and mm-hmm. editing the podcast for hours and weeks on end. Appreciate it. Uh, happy holidays, everyone. <laughs> happy holidays. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out God, with us. I love Arbor Day. It is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you here next week in another episode of The Fortress of...